you know, you think this is a normal pullover. It doesn't even have any symbols on it, you, you might think. But, you know, something always tells me, you know, I always see these symbols, you know, everywhere. Look at this here. Look at, that's the downward, one of those triangles from Auschwitz, you know, the concentration camps. And it doesn't have a meaning, you know, to reinforce the, uh, the pullover or something. No, not at all. You know, they have it like, you know, there's nothing at the back, you know. Or, it's, it's not to reinforce it, you see. There it is. You see? So here's the inside of it. Yeah. So you see just the uh, where it was uh, sewn. So I say it's really sewn onto it, you know. Uh, I guess nobody sees this, and the guy who was wearing this, you see, it's like uh, it's sewn onto it. You see, no. They took the um, all the effort to to sew it onto it, you know. So it, it's important to them. The uh, inverse triangle of death. And by whom is it? It's by Levi's, you know, Levi's Strauss. Well, that's a jaywalker name, isn't it? So I see here the jaywalkers, and here is the the concentration camp, the pyramid, Pharaoh's pyramid of death, the inverse pyramid. So here it says where it was made in Vietnam and this might also be related with the downward uh, triangle which I'm going to show you in a minute and made in Vietnam you know they do, there's a lot of child work child workers you know child labor and just, just like in the concentration well, there were no children in the concentration camps or they murdered them quickly I mean, no labor so much by children. And um, because the Nazis, they saw them as use, useless eaters. And um, so child labor, you know, or at least forced labor. I mean, and that what was going on in the concentration camps. It was all about forced labor. So I see it all gathered together, you know. Here, the symbol of the forced labor made in Vietnam and the jaywalkers. So there are three items, you know, and the whole thing is in blue for the, uh, the war color of Pharaoh. Their war against humanity. So there are too many ingredients here just to, you know, not interconnect them like, you know. So now I'm going to show you what the um, the inverse the blue inverse triangle of Auschwitz what it means so here you can see it in German where we can see all the inverse pyramids of death which the concentration camp inmates had to wear on their chest on top we can see red for the political prisoners which Homie Ross would have gotten, as he was a political prisoner in Switzerland, the base of the Nazi Templars. And here, right here, we see the blue inversed pyramid of death, which says emigrant with an E, which today we would call an immigrant with an I which is quite peculiar, as today's Muslim immigrants are called immigrants with an I. An immigrant with an I is someone coming into a country, whereas an emigrant with an E 
is someone leaving the country. So here you see on the pullover exactly this blue inverse pyramid, as you can see here, which the, uh, the inmates in the concentration camps had to wear. And you see it here on uh, Levi Strauss. It has no function whatsoever, you know, for to reinforce it. It's absolutely this here. And here in English, so here on top here, it says foreign forced laborers in Germany wearing the inverse blue triangle like many French forced laborers in Germany kidnapped by the Nazis after France lost the war in 1940. Or Vietnamese forced child laborers sewing their blue forced labor patch on a Levi's pullover. You almost don't want to wear any more clothes and you better walk around naked because everywhere there's something. Well, here it says the contribution of whole catch refugees at Levi Strauss. So if you punch this phrase into the search bar, you'll find the whole article where you can read it. And due to the censorship, I'm not allowed to pronounce this word here. So this word here with the H. Otherwise, my video will get deleted immediately. So I say for the forbidden H word, hole catch, as they caught them and put them in a hole. Also, concerning the word J people, the censorship won't allow me to call them by their name, so I call them jaywalkers. And I have nothing against these people. Only the censorship they inflict upon the world is quite annoying. So here at Levi Strauss, you see in fact those refugees, emigrants, who can be pictured with an inverse blue triangle as their political status as at Levi Strauss here defines. So maybe this is how the blue Auschwitz triangle got onto the Levi's pullover. But even more likely, it's a cruel joke by the jaywalker nobility towards their jaywalker slaves who escaped the Nazis emigrating to America. So here you see a list of European jaywalker nobility. And here you go, they have coat of arms. It's real nobility. You know, all peoples in the world, they have a nobility. Also the jaywalkers. And the normal, simple jaywalkers, you know, they're the slaves of the jaywalker nobility. Just as the Germans are the slaves of the German nobility or the French of the French nobility. So here it says German here. And look, there is also Strauss, like Levi Strauss. It's part of the nobility. And in the Hungarian Jaywalker nobility, they're even called Adolf. Oh, can you believe that? I mean, wasn't Adolf the guy who murdered the jaywalkers? I mean, what's going on here? Right? So, there's quite a lot. You know? I mean, if you hear uh, Lord uh, Rothschild, Rothschild talking, well, he talks like, like, 
King Charles, you know, he doesn't talk like Netanyahu or something. It's a completely different way of talking, you know. Just listen to it, you know, just look around and open up your eyes and your ears. You know, Lord Rothschild, he talks like King Charles, you know, the ex. He's talking, you know, like this, I'm Lord Rothschild, you know. Oh dear, it's a jolly girl, you know. He doesn't talk like, you know, like Prime Minister Netanyahu, does he? No, he doesn't. You know, it's the nobility, you know, there's a difference, you know. Of course, a huge enterprise like Levi Strauss is of Pharaoh's nobility. Otherwise, they couldn't have kept their company, nor could it have developed into an industrial multinational giant, as it obviously has. So, here is the hierarchical um, setup of Pharaoh, you know. This is us, the concept of four, the slaves. And the hierarchy is this, the concept of three. There are three sides in a pyramid, or, and the ground, it's like a square, so it's the concept of four, you know. And here's Pharaoh on top, and here there are two types of nobility, you know, like in Europe. There's the higher nobility, this one, and there's the lower nobility, these ones here. It's the same. You know? And this one here, the vizier, that's where the name, etymologically, the name a viscount, where it comes from. You know? I mean, what does it mean, a viscount? Yeah, count we know by now, but what is this vi stuff here? It's the same as a vice president, you know. And in German, you write it like this, a vice president, like V-I-Z, you know, vice president. This one, the C is a Z, a Z in uh, American English, in British English, a Z. So all of this, so this is the president, and here, the vizier, it's the vice president. You know, it's, it's, we're being ruled by Pharaoh, believe it now, people. And there's also a Jay Walker nobility, like these ones here with their inverse pyramids. I mean, why did they put it on here? I, and in fact, there's a Levi branch of the Jay Walker nobility as Baron Levi here. And here it says, the Lord Levi. And he's in plenty of jaywalker activities with his jaywalker slaves, as you can read here. So here it says, the Baron Levi, like Levi Strauss, you know, the, uh, the garments. It says, the Lord Levi. And here's in a lot of jaywalker activities with the slaves, you know, to do some goodwill stuff, you know. And he's a long-standing friend of former Prime Minister Tony Blair. Oh, that's not very good, eh? Look at them. So, remember the um, the pyramid, you know, I just showed you before. You know. So, here it says here in German, I can't pronounce the word, but it says J. Walker Nobility, and there's a long list. So this is a long list of German Jay Walker nobility and a certain Clara von Strauss who got terminated in the Zobibor extermination camp in 1943. Now, why would Pharaoh's nobility exterminate Pharaoh's nobility? You would ask yourselves. And I'll answer that question in a minute. So here's the long list. You can read it yourself. You see, it's, it's all Jay Walker nobility. It's a very long list. Well, you can punch it in there yourself. There's something I wanted to show you. If you punch that in German, what I showed you before, you know, then you can uh, you can read the whole list for yourself. 
So here it says uh, Strauss Clara Afon, and she was born in in the Hague apparently, and she lived in Frankfurt. Oh no! And then she emigrated to the Netherlands you know, because of the Nazis, of course. And she was caught, and she died 1943 in Zobibor. And the list goes on. So here we are only at uh, S. So why would Pharaoh's nobility exterminate Pharaoh's nobility? I'll answer that for you. Well, when the J runners ran away from the Romans in the JJ base, thus performing the diaspora, the local JJ base nobility found themselves without their slaves. And what can an aristocrat do without his slaves? He's certainly not going to work himself. So here it says, a king without a people. And you see the in, on a chess, a chess piece representing the king, standing all by himself on a Freemason checkerboard, you might say. So the Jay Walker nobility ran after their slaves, also taking the diaspora, and finally ending up in Germany where it gave severe frictions with the German nobility, who didn't want to share their land and power with the newcomers of the Jay Walker nobility. In spite of the fact that both the German nobility and the Jay Walker nobility come out of Pharaoh's nobility, and are in fact brothers and sisters with each other. Nevertheless, a huge internal war within Pharaoh's nobility started, leading to two world wars where the German nobility did a final solution, exterminating both the Jay Walker nobility and their Jay Walker slaves. So here you see Emperor William II with the SS symbol, the Totenkopf symbol here on his thing, long before the SS even existed. So that says it all, doesn't it? And in order to have the Germans fight for the German nobility, the whole Germanic propaganda was invented making the Germans believe that they were fighting for Germany, where in fact the Germans were sacrificing themselves for the German nobility. Look, it even says here S, S, one S like here, and one S like here, and long before the SS even existed. This picture was taken long before. So Pharaoh's nobility are so good in lying and the dumb slaves believe it. The Germans believe to be Germanic super warriors and the jaywalkers believe to be God's chosen people, which are all tricks by Pharaoh's nobility in order to unify certain peoples, whether jaywalkers or Germans, at certain times, in order to mold them into some identitarian form with a certain pharaonic goal. We are all slaves of Pharaoh, and all peoples of this world have to obey Pharaoh's nobility, who love it to rub their hidden symbols into our faces, which probably just makes them feel good and invincible. Let's just call it pharaonic graffiti. Due to the permanent censorship of this global 
and especially European dictatorship we are living in and led by Switzerland. I cannot pronounce the name of this pharaonic slave camp here because Foxtube would delete my video immediately and one is risking serious jail time when discussing this horrible place. So I'll call it Outwick from now on, as wick like a candle wick, from the verb to wick, meaning to absorb or draw off liquid or energy by capillary action. So here it says outwick, and at the same time it reminds us of the word wicked. And a wicked place it was. And this here, I hung it up while I was sleeping in my tent here in the grass while the Polish police they were looking for me. They were driving around here, and but I was in the in the grass, so they didn't see me. I had my t my green tent in the glass in the grass. So because the day before I tried to uh, sneak in in the outwake. And I, uh, because they didn't let me in Outwick, because uh, they said I should put my backpack somewhere, which I didn't want to do, you know, they didn't let me in with my backpack. Uh, so I thought, well, just, you know, make an escape from Outwick, but the other way around, you know. So I, I jumped two of these fences in a wall, you know, to, uh, to get in uh, Outwick, you know. And I, I made it, I was in there and I got arrested. Which you can see on my video on my channel, Gatse uh, Frats. And I wrote down here the outwig made in Switzerland. You know, the Swissies financed everything, which I've shown you and proven to you in my videos. So here it says a wick, as in outwick, a strip of porous material of up which liquid. Fuel is drawn by capillary action to the flame in a candle, lamp, or a lighter. So this here. And the verb is to absorb, to wick. It means to absorb or draw off liquid by capillary action. And it's also to, um, to suck out the energy, in this case, to outwick. So in my new censorship vocabulary, to outwick means to suck out the life energy out of innocent people by Pharaoh and their Swissies. So here it says, getting outwicked by the Swissies. He sees Swissies with his gun and his Darth Vader uh, Star Wars helmet, here the Swiss flag, all powerful, you know, looking out over the, the octagon here. And he has homie Ross, you know, sucking out his life energy, getting outwicked, you know, just like the uh, the outwick, the evil wicked camp. They put me also in an evil wicked camp. So this is the meaning of getting outwicked. Well, if it's not allowed anymore to use certain words, we might just as well make ourselves a new language and leave the forbidden vocabulary for the lawyers, the judges and the politicians. I don't even want to use their words anymore. You want to push us? We'll push you back. Homie Ross's pushback lingo. Hey, Swissy. So here's see all the censored a completely censored book. Here's the hand coming out of the uh, computer and strangling us. Here it says the pushback lingo. Well, let's work on that. In this respect, Levi Strauss of Pharaoh's nobility not only shows the Outwick triangle camp label of the inverse pyramid of death. But Levi Strauss even shows the Outwick camp shirt worn by an Asian alleged child laborer, perfectly in the style of the Outwick slogan Arbeit macht frei. 
But okay, if Levi Strauss is doing it themselves, it must be okay then. Huh? So it is in fact, you can see this on the Levi Strauss website themselves, the, um, the Outwick camp shirt. It says the perfect fit for your career. This is, you know, like work hard and you'll be free, you know. And um, here I wrote here, the Levi Strauss Outwick camp shirt, making fun of the whole catch. The Outwick camp shirt on the Levi Strauss website can be bought from the Gap company and they even call it a camp shirt, meaning that they are well aware of what they're doing. And so is Levi Strauss showing all these whole catch items and outwick triangles. And there's even more, which I'll show you in a minute. So here it says Gap, a camp shirt in Poplin, whatever that is. And it says here in British pounds. And here I wrote here the Outwick camp shirt, as on the website of Levi Strauss. Of course, a normal jaywalker would never do this and make fun of the whole catch where they suffered so much. Therefore, we must differentiate between the normal jaywalker slaves here to the left and the masters of the jaywalker nobility to the right. Just as any people in the world gets ruled by their respective aristocrats. So here you can see the, uh, here it says the normal jaywalker people. And here is the jaywalker nobility, Baron de Rothschild, Baron of Rothschild. And this is the castle of Watsden Manor and with the Horus symbol. Here you see the Horus symbol, which is the sun hieroglyph, uh, which is also the 101, as I explained in my last videos, the 101 videos, the O is here in the middle. It's the sun uh, hieroglyph or, or hieroglyph. And this is a one, and this is a one, a 101, which is in fact, the winged sun disk of Horus. So this represents a wing and this one too. And in the middle is the sun disc where the Nazis had the swastika. It's all the same thing. So normally it's uh, horizontal. So that's why a wing here and a wing. So horizontal wings like. So, and it's the same for all peoples. You know, it's like King Charles is not like the English people. So similarly, you could see here King Charles here, and here the English people, or here the uh, uh, the German Kaiser, and here the German people, you know. All peoples have the nobility, which is Pharaoh's nobility, ruling over them, including the jaywalkers, and they're also quite normal jaywalkers, who are not like dressed up like this, but they are not of the nobility. And um, this is very important that we learn this. So these ones here are not the same as these ones here. These ones here are the masters of these ones here. And these ones here to the left are the slaves of these ones here. Just as the European people are the slaves of the nobility, and they still are. And during the Middle Ages and for about maybe 800 years, they were in a feudal system, the whole of Europe, being a slave of the nobility. So this is the same like uh, reference or association, you know, the slaves and their nobility, the commoners and their aristocrats. You know, and all peoples have this. And these ones here to the left, they always get all the blames for what these ones to the right do. And they call them, they call themselves both jaywalkers, these and these ones. 
although they are not the same. These are the masters, these are their slaves. It's the same master-slave relation between the jaywalker nobility and their ordinary jaywalker slave commoners, as in between King Charles here to the left and an ordinary British hooligan on the right side. So to the left is the master and on the right are his slave commoners or between the king of Spain here to the left and his Catalan commoners to the right, of whom the Spanish nobility has put the entire Catalan people's government in prison for the next 15 years, because the Catalan commoners wanted to rule themselves away from these pharaonic parasites. And you see the King of Spain in his Order of the Garter cloak. Here's the Order of the Garter. This is the Garter here. The same as the Q from uh, the Q movement. And here is the Prime Minister of the people in prison for 15 or 20 years even. And here are the commoners' freedom for Catalonia. So here's the master to the left, and here are the commoner slaves to the right. It's the same relations as the jaywalker have towards their jaywalker nobility. So when the jaywalkers ran away from the JJ base 2000 years ago, they ran away from Pharaoh, they ran away from the Romans, then the jaywalker nobility ran after them into Europe. But as all the land in Europe had already been stolen from the white race and divided amongst Pharaoh's nobility, the newcomers of the jaywalker nobility couldn't get any land in Europe anymore and land was the capitalism in those days. So the jaywalker nobility went into the money business and into industry, like the illustrious barons of Rothschild or Levi Strauss, in order to get the finance together to buy themselves some land. This gave enormous frictions with the German, Polish and Russian nobility, who didn't want to share land and wealth with the newcomers of the jaywalker nobility, who were in fact their brothers and sisters of also of the pharaonic nobility, and which finally led to pogroms and genocide for which, through lies and propaganda, the European nobility used a small part of their dumb European slaves to do the job for them. The actual Middle East conflict is the same, with the Arabic Philistine nobility trying to eliminate the newcomers of 1948 by using religion as their main tool. The battle in Gaza is not between the peoples, but between the 1948 newcomers of the Jaywalker nobility and the Arab Philistine nobility. For the Arab nobility, Gaza and the entire JJ base still belong to the Turkish Ottoman Caliphate. Therefore, the Arabic nobility use religion to bring back the Caliphate. Whereas a Caliphate was never by God, Allah, nor the people, but a Caliphate is a feudal dictatorship by the Oriental nobility. 
It needs a vertical war, folks, to stop all the horizontal wars between the peoples. Hamas is a tool by the Arabic nobility and the JJ base state belongs to the Jaywalker nobility, like the barons of Rothschild and others. Therefore, on October the 7th, the JJ base state left the door open in order to mobilize the Jaywalkers to be ready in their hearts to wage war for their lords of the Jaywalker nobility. So here you see the Ottoman sultans, and it says here the real Gaza war, and this is what it's all about, people. We can all see here how Levi Strauss of the Jaywalker nobility are making fun of the whole catch and making fun of their Jaywalker slaves probably because they always run away from their masters, or maybe because they say that they are something better than their masters by saying that they are God's chosen lot, which of course Pharaoh's nobility can't really approve of, that the jaywalker slaves think to be better than the jaywalker nobility. You can all find this disgusting message from the master to his slave by punching Levi Strauss in the search bar. So here you punch Levi Strauss. Then click on Levi Strauss and company. Here they are. So I punch on it. Levi Strauss company. Up, where, and then click on work with us. So here I'm going here, work with us. It's a very slow connection. Okay, there it is. The, the Outwick camp shirt. They're just making fun of it. You know? So, and here the masters are trans transmitting the warning to his workers and slaves, Arbeit macht frei. Work well if you want to stay free. And as the Levi Strauss nobility are so blatantly showing their contempt towards their jaywalker slaves, it becomes very clear we have to differentiate between the two of them, the slaves and their masters. And therefore, I dug a bit deeper into the Jaywalker nobility, where on the website of the British Jaywalker nobility and chapter hereditary baronies, there are some more Levi's and Strauss's, as in Levi Strauss, together with, of course, the Barons of Rothschild and some other well-known names like Montague. So here you can see the list of British Jew, um, Jaywalker nobility and gentry. And so we go to the hereditary baronies. Well, all of this is interesting, you know. So, and uh, even here, there is a, a Levi here. Oh, let's have a look at that. Well, it's the same one as later on. A Viscount from the Pharaonic word Vizier. Vizier. And so here we got the, um, so here we see Rothschild, of course, and all under the baronies, and they are, you know, they are barons. Note that very well. They are barons. You know, they're not like ordinary jaywalker 
slaves. And um, yeah, here it says Montague, you know, like uh, like the Montague guy, the uh, the director of the Bank of England. And so here, let's have a look at Harry Lawson. There you go. There he is. So this is a Levi, just like Levi Strauss, and it's a Viscount, you know. And later on, I do a comparison, you know, with the head and together with the head of uh, Levi Strauss. So look, it's the first Baron Burnham. What is a Burnham Castle, probably? And well, there's a lot of interesting things to read, but I won't. It will take too long. So, you know, he, he's together with the Prince of Wales and yeah, Edward the Eighth, and uh, his father hosted King Edward the Seventh, and his son King George the Fifth, and his son King Edward. You know, they're completely they're good pals with the um, with the royal house of of Britain. Well, would you think a normal jaywalker could do this, or a normal English person? Well, no, of course not. You know, these are all pharaohs, you know, in spite of the fact they call themselves like jaywalkers. But this is jaywalker nobility, see? Like every other person in the world, you know, they have a nobility and also the jaywalkers. So that was Harry Levi. Now we go to Edward Levi. There you go. From the same castle. And you know, yeah, he's got the same head as uh, Levi Strauss, you know, the uh, the cloth company and the uh, um the Outwick uh, shirt, you know. And for them, you know, the, the jaywalkers, they're just, just another pair of slaves, just like the English slaves or the, the French slaves or the American slaves or whatever. And also him, you know, was all King Edward, you know, King Edward the, the Eighth and King Edward the Seventh and, and so forth, King George, you know. And they all come to their castles of the, the jaywalker nobility. Yeah, that's the castle. The whole barn, barn. Well, it's not a barn. It's a big barn, eh? The whole barn estate. Yeah. They got huge castles. And I didn't show the other one. Maybe the other, the Harry Levi Castle. Was it the same castle? Yeah, whole barn. The whole barn. It's a barn with a big hole in it. A huge hole, probably. And um, so, yeah. And the next chapter, called Extinct, after the hereditary baronies, well, we found the Baron Strauss, as in Levi Strauss. So we got all the ingredients here for Levi Strauss, you know. Uh, there we go. Do you see, anybody see Strauss? Oh, there he is. They're the first Baron of Conesford. You know, the Coneheads they have, you know. Henry Strauss. Well, let's have a look. A conservative politician and a lawyer. Well, of course, you know. And. Uh, what did he do? Oh, look, the inner temple, you know, Templars, of course. Otherwise, I mean, who would call it temple, you know? And uh, the Baron Conesford, the Union Peers. And the Queen's Council, you know. This is the nobility, you know. Out of Pharaoh, 
in spite of the fact, you know, it is the jaywalker nobility. But, you know, so we got all the ingredients. Herr Strauss, I then Levi Strauss, and before I just showed you Levi, you know. So, and it's all part of this here. You know, the list of British jaywalker nobility, you know. And they're not like the commoners, the jaywalker commoners, you know. This is very important. And because of these here, the jaywalker commoners, commoners, they always get the blame for everything because people read, oh, it's a jaywalker, like Levi or Strauss, you know. Ah, then all the jaywalkers, they must all be bad, you know. Let's do something. Let's do a pogrom or do a, you know, a little hole catch or something or whatever. But it's not the same, you know. People are going after the wrong ones, you know. The barbarians, you know. Which I think is a good name because the Romans said that, you know. But, you know, the barbarians are not like the European peoples. The Romans called them the barbarians. They're good warriors, you know, good killers. But they're not always, you know, too clever, you know, to understand everything. So they didn't understand the difference. And like in the Second World War, they believed all the lies of Pharaoh's nobility, you know, and they just killed the wrong ones, unfortunately, in the whole catch and in the, uh, the Outwick concentration camp, you know. So that's why I'm really like focus, focusing on it here. So you understand it, you know. Um, I'm not a jaywalker myself, you know, so I don't really, I don't really uh, need to defend them. But the thing is, I don't want you to miss out the real enemy and make you lose too much energy and time on the wrong enemy. That's why. So. There we have all the ingredients for Levi Strauss, don't we now? With a Levi and a Strauss inside the British Jaywalker nobility and being great friends with the British royalty of the upper nobility, thus explaining the contempt here of the Jay Walker Levi Strauss nobility for the ordinary Jay Walker commoners and their sufferings by clearly making fun of the whole catch through these all revealing images of utter contempt by the Levi Strauss nobility over their Jay Walker slaves, thus divines the general character of the worldwide nobility, contempt for the commoner. So there was already the word for here. I would never, you know, like uh, glue it on her face, but it was already here on the website. So I put the other words here to it, you know, so it doesn't look a bit funny, just only the word four here so i wrote here contempt for the slaves by pharaoh's nobility so this is the original uh outwick uh camp shirt of the um of the whole catch and this is the levi strauss company here showing the same shirt and the sufferings that go with it in utter contempt, you know, on their website. So this also is the the whole catch outwick camp shirt. You know, it's unmistakably, I'm it's unmistakably, you know, and it can be bought as I've just shown you before at the Gap Company, and maybe Levi Strauss makes them as well. So, and it's not only this, I always also showed you the blue inverse triangle or the, the inverse pyramid of death, you know, on, the, on another garment of Levi Strauss, you know, for no reason at all. And I'm going to show you some more, you know, I'm not finished yet, eh? and neither is Levi Strauss. 
So there even is a website with the Jay Walker heraldry, the coat of arms. And don't you think a normal Jay Walker commoner, he has a coat of arms? They don't. It's the same as the difference, you know, between the English nobility and the English commoners. You know, there's the same contempt of the nobility towards the what they call they call us barbarians yeah so i can't say it enough and i still see you know some comments of people who, who haven't understood it you know or maybe it's the takia of the philistines you know just just pushing on with that jaywalker thing you know with the obsession sort of you know takia that's the um the lie that has been granted in the Islam. It says in the Quran, if you need to, use the taqiyya. And um, so here you can see the first coat of arms. Um, it says here, Fides et Charitas, charity and honesty, probably or um, faithfulness here you see the uh, the jay walker language uh, think and thank wow looks nice and apparently this tree is a symbol of zionism it said in the uh, and as i've shown you in my videos that zionism is not from the people it's from the nobility because Pharaoh's nobility in the JJ base, they wanted their slaves back. So this is why. And of course, also the European nobility, they didn't want all the jaywalkers in Europe and neither the jaywalker nobility, you know, the newcomers who wanted to take part of the cookie. So, I mean, all wars out of the nobility, everything everything is so you see the lion you know has nothing to do with religion it's nobility and just as in europe the nobility belongs uh, the religion the vatican and the uh, it always has belonged to the um, uh, to the nobility the church has always belonged to the nobility the protestant protestant church was made by the knights templars and the catholic church was traditionally belonged to the kings and queens and, and the emperors so the jay walker heraldry you know, and learn how to differentiate you know. and again the commoners the jay walker commoners they always get the blame for everything because of what these ones do and you see they even have a fleur de lis inside you know the fleur de lis which is the symbol of the french nobility you know why would the jay walker nobility have a fleur de lis you know it's all the same this here is a freemason sign why a black hand oh complicated why a black hand hey? Oh, well, there was a, a Freemason organization called the Black Hand that were, who killed the, uh, the, um, the, um, um, the guy in Sarajevo in 1914, or who was the, um, the Habsburg, the Archduke, you know, that was the Black Hand. Um, they said that it was a Serbian, a Serb organization but the black hand was actually a freemason well, i guess this is the black hand and you see the thumb pushing in here in the middle between the thumb and the uh, and the finger here yeah. oh. nice fleur de lis just as the symbol of the um of the ukraine it's a fleur de lis so let's do a facial comparison so to the left there is baron levi and to the right levi strauss 
And the thing, what I find pretty remarkable, you know, look at the eyes. I mean, this is like normal. And on the left side, so well, let's say on the right side here in the face, which is the left side of his face. So like here, it's like going down here, you know, and here it's not. And this guy here is the same here. Like this side here is going down. If, if you look at this here and this here, it looks very similar, you know. And uh, this is about the only thing I could find. And there was also the other uh, Viscount Levi. Well, I couldn't find anything there, really. And uh, But this here, this is the only thing, this and this. So, but um, I'm quite sure, you know, it's it's the same bloodline, and um, it's uh, it's the nobility. And look at the Levi Strauss logo, which shows an unfinished Outwick inversed triangle for the political prisoners in the concentration camps showing only the upper half of the Outwick Triangle, and where it's not hard to imagine the entire Outwick Triangle in the Levi Strauss logo through the continuation of the downward lines into its original form, as if the triangle was bitten off or something. So here you see the Outwick Triangle, and here if the Levi's logo, same color, yeah? So if you continue these lines here and here, well, you get this, and this is not a coincidence. And it's like bitten off here, and I can explain that to you as well. So I show you the previous picture one more time. So this is the Outwick inversed triangle of death. And if this is the same color, the uh, the logo of Levi's. And if you continue the lines here, you get the downward pyramid. The same thing. It's not a coincidence. Together with all the other things we saw at Levi Strauss, I mean, it's definitely this. It's like the master's contempt for the slaves, in spite of the fact, you know, they call themselves both jaywalkers, but they are not. Well, where the red Levi Strauss Outwick Triangle is interrupted, there are two parts of a circle for the compass, and where the Vesica Piscis fits nicely into the logo. The Vesica Piscus is a Freemason symbol forming a chain out of their Templar predecessor slogan, one for all, all for one. As in a chain, all rings or members are connected and need to follow. As in, where we go one, we go all, out of the very same organization. So as the four was already here, I put in the fun here. So it reads Levi's for fun, which is of course very cynical, you know, it's not funny at all what they're doing. Showing this um, Outwick shirt and the inverse, inverse pyramid of death of the Outwick triangles. So this is the Vesica Piscas with an oval in the middle. That's why they call it the Oval Office in America. And these things here, like one here, out of the triangle, you know, it, it, it is a triangle. I mean, why would they put it like this? Why not like this, you know? There's a reason. They do nothing without a reason. You know, they've been thinking about how to put, how to make this the logo, you know, for a long time, you know. And a circle is, of course, it's also the compass, like the square and compass, you know. And it nicely fits in. 
the masters love to use the Vesica Piskis for their logos like Audi cars, Mastercard, and many others, and even here at the Washington Obelisk. So here you see the Audi cars. You see it's a chain. It means one for all and all for one. It's all connected. And if one chain is going, you know, the other ones have to follow. Like where we go one, we go all. MasterCard, the same with the oval in the middle here too. You got the Washington Monument with the, the shade here. The big obelisk in the middle of the, uh, of the womb. You know, we all have an obelisk up our asses, you know. So here you see one circle and here's the other one. You know, it's from above. Here's the grass, the lawn. And um, the masters, you know, it's all pharaonic stuff. Right? And as these occult members have demons mobilized, they immediately see the empty place for the Vesica Pisces underneath the Levi Strauss logo. So here again is the Levi's logo, and they see this immediately. You know, there's some that this is like missing here. It's like the demons telling them this. You know, so and this chain, it's a, it's a Templar symbol, and it means one for all and all for one. And this is why their political wing of the Freemasons they have this as well. And it's the same as where we go one, we go all. It's all the same. And these guys here are the Nazi Templars. So you might say that this is the base, you know, of this Outwick inverse triangle in red for the political prisoners like Homie Ross. And this is the base for it. So it means that the base of the, the whole hull catch, you know, it's the Nazi Templars. That's what it's saying, actually. Just this here, you know, where this is missing, it's saying exactly that, you know, that the base of the whole catch and the outwick, that it is the Nazi Templars. And this is exactly what I've been telling you all the time. You know, even it's, if it is like negative, like a negative film, so to speak, they still see it immediately. And I saw it too because I'm highly initiated, not in an order, you know, but by my family. The tradition have, has always initiated one generation after the others, you know, against this evil. So this is why the orders, you know, they can't really send the enforcer to me because I'm not part of any order. So, but I was initiated by the, um, by, uh, by, by my house. So here you can read about it. The Vesica Piskis, or Pisces, sometimes it's written with an E, sometimes with an I. And Pisces, it means the fish, and Vesica, it means the bladder. Like in French, la vessie, it is the bladder, which is almost the same word, you know. Why? Why do they call it the bladder of a fish? Because um, the Knights Templars, they were quite satanic. As the French king said, and his, um, his uh, state attorney, um, Guillaume de Nogaret, and they used the entrails of a fish, you know, for, um, for future reading and mind reading and all these black magic sort of practices. So that's why they call it the Vesica Piscas. It's not because this middle part should look like a fish. I mean, I've never seen a fish like this, have you? So it's because of the entrails. And um, they use these things in voodoo, you know, for and to see if it's a good day, if it's a good day to attack or to defend a castle, or to stay in bed or whatever, you know. And here you find it in um, Christianity, and uh, with four, 
things here. The circle is the concept of three and four of them is the concept of four. Well, there you go. The Outwick Levi Strauss logo is from 1969, as you can see here. And right after the horrors of the concentration camps of World War II, where apparently Levi Strauss got the inspiration for the logo from. So here it says, this is the, here you see the Outwick inverse pyramid logo of Levi Strauss with the, uh, the Vesica Pisces going in here, like it's bitten off. And here you see it. The logo started in 1969. So that is after World War II. So that makes it, you know, possible that they got the inspiration from the inverse pyramid of, uh, of death from the Outwake camps. So here it says Levi Strauss pullover with Outwake triangle, this one here. It's the same as this one there. And we can witness here Levi Strauss having quite an obsession with the Outwick red and blue triangles. The Outwick camp shirt and obviously making fun out of the whole catch. Whereas if a German would do this, he'd go to prison for a very long time. Like this German girl to the left here, who went to prison for wearing a t-shirt with just the Outwick name on it, as you can see here. Or this Italian girl to the right, also going to prison just for wearing this t-shirt. And in fact, she only says that we all live in a big concentration camp which is in fact the truth. So what's wrong with saying that? Well, it's very dangerous to use that word. And that's why I call it Outwick. So here you can see the German girl. Here's, she has Outwick here. And here the Italian girl also with Outwick. And I call it here Outwick. And they both went to prison and many, many, more. Here on this t-shirt it says in German Outwick, ich hatte damal eine Frage, meaning Outwick, I would have a question, which I, Homie Ross, would like to answer to the misled European slaves of Pharaoh's nobility and how they were set up by their masters of Pharaoh's nobility. But I can't find any anymore, as everyone is afraid to open up his mouth in this total dictatorship. Consequently, because of this Jay Walker censorship terror on the Europeans and innocent people going to prison for many years, the jaywalkers get hated again by many Europeans and Americans who translate this terror into the actually widespread belief that the jaywalkers are very powerful and fully control the lives of the Europeans, being capable of destroying the lives of individuals who just opened up their mouth. So it says the anti-jaywalkerism on the rise. So, you know, I don't want to use any more of these pharaonic expressions, you know, so I say jaywalkerism. I mean, anything, everything is forbidden anyway, so. And so anti-jaywalkerism on the rise. And here it says, and everybody asking, well, how the hell was this possible? You know, well, I just answered that, how this is possible. One of the reasons. 
So I fear that due to this utterly counterproductive judicial terror inflicted upon the Europeans, there will be no Europeans left who want to help the JJ Bays in their actual struggle for survival in the Middle East, fighting against Hamas, Hezbollah and whatnot. Through the Jay Walker attack on the freedom of speech, for most Europeans, the Jay Walkers played out their last goodwill card. So here is the Outwick camp, and here I wrote, I believe it really happened. Please don't put me in prison. And it really is too bad because as a historian, I know that six million jaywalkers were murdered by the Nazis. And I believe that the whole catch really happened. Therefore, I would like to talk to the whole catch deniers and give him the proofs of how wrong they are. But I don't find anyone anymore on the internet as they are all hiding, being afraid of the unfreedom of speech terror. So here it says Europeans hiding from the unfreedom of speech. And this is the Tivas runic symbol for war and victory. And these are Swissies, by the way. Why do people in Europe need to be afraid to express themselves or even ask questions about certain things? For most Europeans, this is very suspicious and it makes them angry and it feels like the unholy Inquisition is back. So it says, the unholy Inquisition is back. Unfreedom of speech, terror. I actually made this video with proofs against the whole catch deniers, but the video got deleted and censored on YouTube. So I put it on Brighton. So you go into Brighton. This is Brighton here and then go in this channel and then scroll down until you find this title it's uh, one of the last or actually one of the first so it says um, it's against the uh, whole catch denier lies so we all get terrorized by this whole catch unfreedom of speech terror except Levi Strauss themselves, who can openly make fun of the whole catch. From the video on the creepy Templar commandery of Dwatval, many people left the comments that the funny symbol on the square inner circle octagon symbol is P3.14 which are highly advanced masters used to build their pyramids, obelisks and Templar churches. When I was filming it, I already thought it looked somehow familiar, but I couldn't place it, as it's about 50 years ago since I had B mathematics in school. Thanks for your comments. And yeah, these pharaohs are the Stonesies, all right, the very first stone builders in Europe. Whereas the Europeans, they were building in, like in Africa, with, in, they were living in dirt huts. So they're very, very much advanced. They're advanced in lies, they're advanced, advanced, they're very superior intellectually to us. So, of course, here is the the title and here's the channel you know, I didn't recognize it you know because when you're filming you know it's a different thing than when you're sitting in front of a screen you know and 
and um, I'm a historian, and I'm, I'm not a mathemat mathematician. I already have problems like adding uh, one and one, you know. So for all the ones amongst you who didn't recognize the P symbol, well, here it is. This is P. And um, this is the symbol coming up. Oh, there it is. This is the P symbol. Um, well, you can look it up yourself. It's quite long. This is in Wikipedia. And um, there's a whole lot here about it. It's about building castles, you need it, building churches, building pyramids. And these pharaohs already knew it, you know. Well, most certainly before I knew it. And they already knew it like, you know, like probably 6,000 years ago. While the Europeans were still walking around in, in bear skins with a lance and uh, couldn't read or write. You know, they taught us everything, actually. Well, not everything. They kept a couple of secrets, but uh, they're very far advanced, you know. We shouldn't underestimate them. They're very superior. The only thing the white race are good at is, like, um, waging war. They're good warriors. That's why they used us, or rather misused us, and they still do. The white race probably have to solve the problem in um, in Gaza with the Hamas and all, and, and the problems in Russia and, and you know the Germanic and the Celt tribes probably have to solve it for these pharaohs. So please don't do that for them. Then some other comments read that the Freemason buried here, there by the name of Lucien Fourneau relates to light and fire as the light bearer lucifer maybe as in the name lucien lucifer lucien and a fourneau in french is a furnace with a hot fire inside so his name might read lucifer from hell and um yeah, so you know, I read your comments. I read all your comments. I, uh, so you see the uh, the square and the compass, and why at the Templar Templars Commandery? Because the Freemasons are the political wing of the military order of the Knights Templars. And um, square and compass. Well, what do you know? So Lucien, you know, L-U-C-I, like Lucifer, it's, it means uh, light, loose. And a fourneau, or a four, that's a, uh, a furnace. So it's from the same video, which you can see here. So this is pretty special, you know, that his name is Lucien Fourneau. Probably not really a, a, a coincidence. There are no coincidences. This Freemason, Lucien Fourneau, was a governor in several French colonies like Cameroon and Congo. He attended the French military school of Saint-Cyr. Saint-Cyr is the equivalent of the American West Point or the English uh, Sandhurst. He became a lieutenant general and was a member of the Order of the Black Star, showing a Templar's cross inside the octagon. And the commander, as in the word Templar's commandery, shows a badge with the 101 Sun hieroglyph representing the winged sun disk of Horus. So he see his name as um, at the burial site, Lucien Fourneau, there he is, or there he was, and um, this is the military school where he was at, and um, it says the uh, distinctions, you see, you know, it's all the sun hieroglyph, you know, with the 
the sun in the middle and two bars at each side as I've shown you um, already many times in the or in my video the Pharaoh show and this this is like 101 or these are the wings and this is the uh, the winged sun disk of Horus. That's what it means. And we see this a lot. So even in the distinctions and decorations, they use it. Just as on the fronts of houses. You know, they're transmitting, transmitting uh, informations with it. You know. So here you can see it. L'ordre de l'étoile noire. And here, so this is what it is actually, yeah. So you can see it's a Templar's cross or a Maltese cross in a octagon. The bigger one is octagon, it's octagonal. And um, even has a pentagon inside here. Oh, and four things here for the square. And maybe a little inner circle here. Everything has a meaning for them, you know. And here again, so uh, the guy was a commander. Here it says, commandeur, a commander. And there it is again. So you can also read it in English here. There we go, English. The Order of the Black Star. And I thought the star was, you know, with light and shining, you know. So here's a lot of people who got it, you know. A lot of commanders. You can read it yourself. Um, so this Black Star thing, it reminds me of the uh, what the Nazis had. They had the uh, the Black Sun. You know? why why a black sun you know the sun is shining it's light uh it's, it's weird isn't it it's like like voodoo black magic it's like the opposite and then, well they actually are doing the opposite you know they are a murderous bunch they are these ones here with the order of the black star and also the other ones you know the the nazis with their black sun it's all voodoo, it's black magic, it's evil stuff, you know. So here you see the black sun. This one here. Weird thing. And uh, it was in this castle here, the Wevelsburg. Of course, they were in a castle. Uh, so here you see it on the, on the floor, this thing here. And all this black magic and black stars and black sun, you know, it's not by the Europeans. It's all by Pharaoh. And the Nazis, they were the Nazi Templars, as I explained in my film, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 1. And, in fact, all these high-ranked officers in police, army, navy and air force are in Freemason Templar orders, like American officers usually are part of the order of Saint Maurice and Lazarus, like the liar General Colin Powell, who lied about Iraq's weapons of mass destruction on orders by his Freemason order. These guys are all traitors to their country and people as they don't serve the people, nor take any orders from their government, but only serve the order. So here you can see him, Colin Powell. You know, huge criminal. And the other ones. Well, you can look it up yourself here. There's Ross Perot, he's part of it. Uh, General Abizaid. What kind of a name is that anyway? 
Matthew Ridgeway. Well, they're all depicted as heroes, like in um, in the newspapers, and uh, but they are not. No. They're all part of this secret order, and many more. Many are so he got a couple of names, and there are more. There are way more. You know. So. There it is, the Order of Saint Maurice and Lazarus. Here it is. Um, this is where it comes from. So in America, it's this here, but it comes out of the um, nobility, military order. There they are. Um, so this is the um the house of the duke of savoy you remember that guy who murdered the um the son of the the young german guy uh dirk uh hammer of the uh, germanic uh medicine his father did you know so this is the uh the House of Savoy. No, it's a Swiss cross, isn't it? Uh, here's a lot of names. Uh, here they are, the uh, Victor Emmanuel of Italy. Uh, many more here. And this is related to all the American officers, you know, and they get their orders from here. This is where they get their orders from, finally, you know. It's all corruption. It's all... Yeah, Rudy Giuliani. There he is. He's also part of it. And uh, yeah, Rudy Giuliani, he's a knight. Uh, And there are many more. So these are all traitors to the people. And they're traitors to the government. Well, anyway, they are the government, you know. So, yeah, Freiherr von Richthofen. So these American generals, they kept their orders from the nobility, as I told you, and they are part of the nobility. You know, other, otherwise they wouldn't be part of all these orders. You know, you see, they all got crowns in the uh, in, in their things. You know, and the people don't have a clue what's going on. They have no clue whatsoever. So, in the American army and other armies as well, you know, th these are the ones giving the orders here. You know, these sort of things here. And this is very much related, of course, also with the Swiss octagon. Only the octagon is of the horizontal rule, and this here is the vertical rule. But now they're all pals together, mostly. The masters are hiding something from us, like these French generals and admirals, all wearing this little red dot. Here you can see it. He's got this little red dot. Uh, he's got one here. This is uh, General Olivier de Bavinchove. So it means he's a uh, of the nobility because of this de here, like von in German, it means of, and it says here général in French, and here admiral is amiral, without a d, Hélène Coldefi, and he also has the real, little red dot here, and I'll explain that to you later, afterwards, what it means. And of course, he's also of the nobility, you know, you won't become an admiral or a general if you're not of the nobility and a Freemason and in some military order like 
the Templars or the Order of uh, Lazarus and uh, Saint Maurice. And here some more red dotters. Here's one and him too. I pronounce the words now in French General Dominique Delors. So they put the De and the Lors, they put it together here. But of course, it was a part, and he is also of the nobility. And here, General François Chauvency, Chauvency, and um, of course, he's also of the nobility. It used to be probably François de Chauvency. There's probably a, um, a ho an aristocratic house called de Chauvency. I think I heard it once. Um, they're all of Pharaoh's nobility. Uh, and they tell us, you go to war, you kill that one, you go and kill those ones here, you drop a bomb here. Uh, this is how it's been working for the last 2,000 years huh? in Europe. And here some more red dotters. Here's one and here's one, always on the left side where the heart is. Uh, this is uh, Le Diplomate Pierre Mena, also a member of the European Parliament. And this one, General Jean-Paul Perruche. And remember, all the wars in history, and actually, they're all by the nobility. They do it, but we have to bleed for it. Even French President Macron is a red dotter. Here you can see the red dot here, the one here. And they all know what it means. Whereas the people haven't got a clue what allegiance they are transmitting with the red dot. Well, it means that they are a commander in the Legion of Honor of the French Republic. A commander like a Knights Templar commander, because they are the ones who invented the Republic. The Knights Templars invented the Republic. So here it says Legion of Honor. And here it says Commander. You can be a commander in the uh, chivalric orders and fraternal orders. You know, also the Freemasons. So here you can see those uh, the sun hieroglyphs everywhere and here as well this is a commander again and what i wanted to show you i, I wanted to show you the red dot and the bloke has a, a sash and i think he has a red dot here and I have to scroll down quickly, it goes too long. You look it up yourself. And ah, here's the red dot. It's not a good, it's not a good picture. It's called a rosette. Yeah, a rose, you know. Which is of course uh, a red rose is the color of the uh, of the old world's order. You know, the uh, the royalists. Uh, here as well. Um, looks like a hat the Pope is sometimes like wearing. Okay, I'll show it in English because there's a better. Uh, I'll show it in French because there's a be better picture of the red dot. So here it's in French L'Ordre National de la Légion d'Honneur. This one here is La Marianne in the middle, which is the French representation of uh, Isis. It's all Horus and Isis. Here you got Horus, and here you got Isis. You know, they are the ones who are ruling over us. I mean, why would they otherwise? Why would they show all these pharaonic things, you know? Uh, these are loads of people who got the uh, Légion d'honneur. Um, I'm looking for the red dot. Nice uniforms. Oh, here it is. 
I think that was it. Huh? Yeah, that was it. No, I missed it. Now here it is. This is what they're wearing on the and all these guys the what they're wearing here on the on their jacket. So this is what it looks like, you know, the red dotters. So it's definitely a sun hieroglyph. The two bars on each side well, that represents the the wings of uh of uh, Horus. In the middle is the sun disk. Uh, in red, you know, well, the sun appears to be red, doesn't it? And uh, our masters are pharaohs, the pure pharaohs. You know, we're only here to work for them, you know, in a system of self sufficiency, a slavery system of self self sufficiency. We all we're only being measured in man hours. And we have to wage all these wars for them. And they give all these distinctions to each other, you know. Oh, I sacrifice that and that many Europeans. Okay, I'll give you an order. A uh, thing like that. The red dot. You're a red dotter. The red dot shows, of course, the Pharaonic 101 sun hieroglyph representing the winged sun disk of Horus, just as the Nazis had one of these. And these guys are all pharaohs. Here's the real pyramid when he got elected for the first time, Macron, the pyramid of the Louvre. Now one of the little ones is called the Pyramid of Mikrinos. There are three little ones around this one in Paris. Mikrinos, that's like Macronos. You know. He is doing the pyramid as well. He's got the red dot here. I mean, why would they show all this pharaonic stuff if they wouldn't be pharaohs themselves? Right? It's, it's so logical. It's so easy and simple, isn't it? Of course, the slave commoners will never get one of these and don't even know what it means. The slave commoners never even saw the red dot. They don't even see the red dot on, on the tip of their own noses. You have to be of aristocratic pharaonic descent to get one of these red dots and be in some sort of chivalric Freemason order, where they hand it out to each other only and not to the people. Here you see Macron, he also, he just got another order here with this star here, just like the nobility, they are nobility. And look at these legs, it looks so funny, you know, it looks like they're walking backwards or doing the Michael Jackson shuffle or something. You don't walk like this, do you know? Look at that. They're walking backwards. We're in a new feudal system of pharaohs and nobility called the Horizontal Rule of the Republic, also called the NWO, which word I can't pronounce anymore either. Here in this video, I only pronounced it once. And the video immediately got Pharaoh's propaganda stuck on it. So this is the title, Tame Tuck and Mad Vlad Lilliputin. So I just make new words, you know. And I immediately got this here. The NWO. I can't pronounce it. I, I never wrote it down anywhere in the video. And I don't think so. No, I didn't. Uh, it's not in the title, it's nowhere. I just pronounced it only once and I immediately got this propaganda of them. You know, they don't even know what the, well, of course they know what the NWO is. And for the other words, you know, for the other names, for a jaywalker, a pink list killer, the outwick, the whole catch. If I use those words, my video gets deleted immediately. 
Right. And those guys, you know, they, they give them each other orders and medals and, and we cannot even open up our mouths, eh? And going back to the last video showing a bag of French peanuts with the logo of the Outwick penal battalions of political prisoners with the red inverse pyramid of death triangle for political prisoners and the circle underneath indicating the penal battalions. So in Outwick, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce the word, you know, the concentration camp, Outwick, the red inverse triangle, inverse pyramid of death, they had this on their chests. And when they had this little circle, it, it meant they were part of a, a penal battalion. So here it says in French, cacouette, it means peanuts. And this was, of course, the last video where I filmed this. Here's the title. How big a chance you think it is that the company chose this logo accidentally by designing both the red inverse outwick triangle for political prisoners, and on top of that, that circle underneath at exactly the right spot. <laughs> well, chances are 0.0% .0 that this was done accidentally. You don't do this accidentally, you know, that it's too much. So here, the bag of peanuts, here, the triangle with the circle, and it's exactly this one here. Here you got the, the inmates of penal battalions of the political prisoners. You got the inverse triangle, the inverse pyramid, just like here, with the circle underneath. And in the circle, there's even a, another circle, just as you see here. This is not a coincidence. All the companies belong to our masters who put all these occult logos on their brands and packages, keeping humanity in a big outwick concentration camp, as these girls try to express. Here it says outwick land. As I can't pronounce this, I say outwick. And the logo says, in fact, Arbeit macht frei, work and be free. And you can stay a free slave if you work for us and give us 50% taxes so we the master can parasite on you and you can keep the other 50% so the slaves can feed and house themselves in this new slavery system of self-sufficiency. And if you won't work for us, we will put you in a concentration camp. That is what this logo so blatantly says. And here, also in the last video, so which is this one here, that's the title, it shows, of course, the sun hieroglyph of the 101 winged sun disk of Horus with the circle in the middle and the two bars on each side. So here is the circle, the sun disk, and here's the bar on each side, which I filmed for you in the Pharaoh show, my very first video uh, on all these uh, houses and castles uh, about everywhere. So these represent represent the wings of Horus and this is the winged sun disk. It's also a one if you put it up if you put it up you know vertically the O and the one 101. So and then the Swiss flag should in fact be a square but that wouldn't make a sun disk right Switzerland is the base of Pharaoh the neutral base of the master race. Here at the Putin speech with Tucker Carlson, 
as his willing intermediary in this lame interview, which was not an interview, but a dictator's one-man show. We can see on this nice occult wooden floor the octagon of the Knights Templars, who are defending the inner circle of power, also called the compass, from the square all around it. And the square and concept of four is the base of a pyramid, where the slaves of Pharaoh are, whereas the inner circle is the concept of three and side of the pyramid, all the way mounting to the top of the hierarchy of Pharaoh's pyramid, where the inner circle is on the top of the pyramid's hierarchy. So here you can see it, it's the octagon, there are eight things, and this is an octagon here. In the middle, there's a inner circle, and so the octagon, as usual, and I've shown you this many times, is protecting the inner circle in the middle here from the squares. And you, you can even see it's a pyramid, you know, with the four sides of a pyramid. You know, and the square is the, um, is the bottom of a pyramid. You know, they know what they're doing. Hey, well, look at these demons. And this secret symbology of the octagon, square and compass, our masters show basically everywhere, and which I've shown and explained to you many times already. As in this video here, where you can see the octagon here, the inner circle here, the octagon, military, police and everything are protecting the inner circle from the square, which is us, the people. And I recently explained that to you in this video here on my channel, Homeland Security, the Swiss Bees, Home of the Devil, part 14, room 101. Well, here another new one in the movie, Law Abiding Citizen from 2009 where they deliberately show the staircase of the Philadelphia Justice Department that apparently feels threatened by all the squares going in and out and needs the uniformed octagon to defend the judiciary inner circle. So it says the film Law Abiding Citizen and here is the octagon symbol. You can see here eight circles of the octagon defending the inner circle from all those annoying squares all around. I'd like to know what it says in the inner circle, which is quite impossible to distinguish on this simple screenshot. So you see there are eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles. They are protecting the inner circle, which is here, from all the squares you know, around it. You know, all these sort of slaves going in and out of the, um, the um, Justice Department of uh, Philadelphia. So the octagon is protecting the inner circle from the squares. Funny, huh? that we find the very same secret symbology both in Russia as in the USA. It must be the same people then, huh? Hey, Tucker Carson, you think you're such a smart guy, so why didn't you ask the Rusky about the secret symbols you both were blatantly sitting on, huh? Maybe. It has to do with your charming red Kabbalah bracelets, huh, Tucker? Nothing in the open, folks. They're all hiding their secret orders and showing each other by all these secret symbols, both Tucker with his little red bracelet and mad Vlad with his octagon floor. 
So here you can see about the red string in the Kabbalah. Here, here it is. The same thing as the Tucker boy was having. And the name Kabbalah, it's quite pharaonic. Ka is the soul when still alive. Ba is the soul when you die. And if you um, attach Allah, the god of the Middle East, you know, well, you get Kabbalah. You know, it's not a coincidence. And all these religions, you know, it's all about the soul, isn't it? So this girly here as well, that, you know, always you can see that here, having the red string here, and many others, as you can. So, and apparently it's against bad luck. Oh, here he says, Tucker Carlson, there he is, he's also. And apparently it's against demons. And I'll tell you some more about it later on. About Putin's, his demons, and how this little string didn't really help very much. I was once attacked by demons at a demonic site of our masters. So I know by my own experience that demons exist, which you can see in this video here. So on this site here, where there's an, an old Roman temple where they did human sacrifices, I got attacked by demons in the night. So it's on the same channel, here's the title. And I uploaded it. I went back filming this like six years ago. So here you can see the interview on the Tucker Carlson channel. Here's the title, and it's five days ago. So, and I can see very well that Mad Vlad has some real demons that help him to lie, act, and answer all the questions. Where obviously Tux, Kabbalah, Red, String, Bracelet, supposedly against demons, didn't help him very much because of Mad Vlad's overwhelmingly powerful demons. So even here you see the red string here on his hand and here as well, of course, together with all the octagons and inner circles and squares. And this guy is controlled opposition. Uh, he's one of them. So here it says Lily Putin. So from the Lily Puts, you know, the lying midget. So I call him Lily Putin from now on. And before the Ukraine war, he said, Putin, Putin he's, uh, Lily Putin, he said, we will not occupy Ukraine. So this is from the Russia Today themselves, you know. So, well, just remember how Lily Putin so blatantly lied about this Ukraine invasion. No, no, Russia is a peaceful country that will not invade the Ukraine. No, no, no. Russia is very peaceful, Mr. Lily put in. And here's some more information from before the uh, Russian invasion in the Ukraine. I mean, we all remember, don't you, how they lied, eh? It says, baseless accusations that Russia will invade Ukraine should not be made. That's what the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Vershinin, that's what he said. You, know, you can all look it up, you know. So I wrote here, Lily Putin's organized liars, once a liar, always a liar, you know. And this uh, controlled opposition, the tame talk, you know, with his nice little red uh, bracelet, he should have known, you know. Of course he knew, you know, he's part of the gang. It's the controlled opposition. Meanwhile, in 2021, while Lily Putin was telling all his lies, the US 
And as they, they said, well, yes, they will invade. We can see them amass large amounts of troops at the border. And it says, approximate positions as of November 29, 2021. Now, Russia massing troops on its border with Ukraine. I mean, this is history, people. You know, Lily Putin, he was lying. And he always lies. Hey, Mr. Lily Putin, once a liar, always a liar. So here I wrote Lily Putin's fantasy empire, full of lies. And here, uh, you know, this uh, this was from January the 28th, 2022, just before the invasion. He even said then, still, uh, Vladimir Lily Putin, mad Vlad Lily Putin, says Russia will not invade Ukraine, but sends warning to the West. Yeah, okay. Lily Putin's lies. So here you can read some more about it in Wikipedia, the prelude to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Everything has been documented, people. So here you can read all about the the Russian and the Lily Putin lies. You know, they've been lying to the whole world. You know, it's all documented. We, I, I remember it, you know, it was everywhere, you know. They were talking about it in before the, already a year before the war. Like here it says, the senior U.S. Defense Department officials reported on May 2021, that's almost a year before the invasion, that Russia had only withdrawn a few thousand troops since the previous military buildup. Despite the withdrawal of several Russian units, vehicles and equipment were left in place, leading to fears that a redeployment might occur. The, official, the officials estimated over 80,000 Russian troops still remained at the Russo-Ukrainian border by early May. Members of the U.S. intelligence community began discussing the serious potential for a Russian invasion during the spring and fall of 2021, noting the massive continued deployment of military assets and logistics far beyond those used for standard exercises. And I remember it very clearly, you know, when they were all talking about it everywhere, you know. And, um, Here the lies continue, you know, uh, by by uh, Lily Putin and the um, and the Russians. So here it says Putin denied any possibility of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, labeling the notions as alarmist, while simultaneously accusing NATO of undergoing unscheduled naval drills at the Black Sea. The, the guy has demons, people. He's a liar, you know. And he's a very good liar. He's very, the demons are helping him. You know, once a liar, always a liar. I don't like liars. I like facts. And these are facts. So you can all look it up yourself. It goes endlessly. It's full of Russian lies here. I mean, it was all over the media. Even the Russian media. Yeah, TAS. TAS, it means truth, apparently. And I, I remember them talking about this, you know. I mean, I don't like media, you know, but okay, we have to get an idea somehow, you know, what's going on in the world. You just, you just need to be critical, you know. Sometimes it gives, or many times it gives an idea generally what's going on. Like uh, Lily Putin saying, no, Russia will not invade the Ukraine. This is Al Jazeera, who, who are actually against the U.S. 
and the and the NATO and whatever. And also, ITV news. I don't know what that is. But, uh, Mad Vlad Lily Putin says Russia will not invade the Ukraine on YouTube. Why would put Lily Putin won't invade Ukraine? Russia tell, uh, tells US it isn't planning to invade Ukraine. Lily Putin says military drills purely defensive. You know, and Sky News, I mean, they, they're quite critical, ain't they now, right? Eh? And um, Mad Vlad Lily Putin says Russia will not invade. Well, it goes on and it goes on. He just lied. You know? Um, so sometimes you can read the, the media and the newspapers. I mean, we are far away, you know, so we have to read something, but just be critical. Yeah. I know there are a lot of lies, you know. And here's some more, you know, in articles, I mean, about how the Ruskies were amassing 100,000 troops or more, 190,000 troops. And, you know, and the Russians could read it, the Chinese could read it, the Arabs could read it. Here, 500,000 troops on the border. Well, this is a bit later, 2023. And, um, yeah, 2021. You know, sometimes there is truth in the media, like this here. And the other one, I'll call Tame Tuck. What a useless interview. Tame Tuck just let Lily Putin tell all his historic lies about the Ukraine and Russia. So here it says Lily Putin, this one here, and Tame Tuck. There you go. This is Tame Tok with his little red string here. Uh, Tame Tok of the controlled opposition. Absolutely. So here you see the drunk Lily Putin with a glass of whatever. And Lily Putin's vodka history lessons. And Lily Putin was even saying in the Tame Tok interview, that the barbarians ransacked Rome because the barbarians had developed economically, which is utter vodka nonsense. On the contrary, the climate had changed in northern and eastern Europe. It had gotten colder. The Germanic tribes were hungry, desperate, pushed in the back by the Huns, and therefore clashed with Rome and finally ransacking Rome. So here it says, Tame Tuck and Mad Vlad Lily Putin. Tame Tuck because of his tame interview, which wasn't an interview. So please people, do not believe any of the historical lies by Mad Vlad Lily Putin and his collaborator Tame Tuck. Lily Putin even dared to say that while Americans are pragmatic, the Russians care more about moral values. And while he was saying this, Tame Tok just smiled apathetically empty into the void. A Laurel and Hardy sketch couldn't have been better. It says Tame Tok and Lily Putin. And all these pharaonic politicians are liars and actors anyway. Therefore, I was not surprised at all to see presidential actor Barack Obama and his wife Michelle, or whatever she is, going to Hollywood producing the movie Leave the World Behind from 2000 and 23. So here you see from the beginning of the film, it says executive producers, Barack and Michelle Obama. 
And as I had to fill up the image, I found this um, the inverse pyramid of death of a French telephone company. You know, they're all pharaohs. These are pharaohs. These are all pharaohs. And you see, it's at the same time, it is a pyramid, you know, in 3D with this part here where the shade is. But it's at the same time, if you only look at one side, it's the inverse Outwick concentration camp uh, triangle. So this should be, again, for the political prisoners in orange or red. It's all over, people. It was a good movie with good actors telling an end time scenario with total chaos and the whole civilization breaking down. The movie could be a worldwide message for the coming Great Reset, about which Obama certainly has some inside information, which he gathered in Davos, Switzerland, meeting this man here, Klaus Schwab. It says the Great Reset, and here's that video, leave the world behind you know with all the animals going out and a total uh, chaos and obama he went to davos a couple of times where he met this guy so you know it's all connected what he's saying about the great reset and what they're showing in the video just as i told you about the um the notre dame um fire you know, which was um, which was arson. I showed that in the video, and it was a message to the world. You find the video on my channel, Homeland Security. Always funny to hear that name of a man named after an army barracks, barracks Obama. Maybe his mum met a U.S. GI in some third world country, so they called the kid. Obama from the barracks, barracks Obama. It says barracks Obama in the army barracks, you know, where he's doing his cinema and acting like he's a tough guy and all that, you know. So all these do the wars for these ones here. And he has a red tie for the, uh, the old world order, the royalists. And since we're back in the Hollywood movies, in the movie Law Abiding Citizen, it not only shows the octagon protecting the inner circle from the squares, but it also shows a whole forest of obelisks where people are getting murdered in the film because the obelisk is a death symbol related to the death of Osiris and used by our pharaonic masters as Pharaoh's symbol of domination. Our masters really love to show their obelisks and pyramids everywhere. Huh? Then, still in the same movie of law-abiding citizen, you know, meaning to be a good slave, yeah, a law-abiding citizen. It shows a brooch, which you can see here, with a demon looking back at the spectators, looking back at us, looking back at you. And finally, and still in the movie, law-abiding citizen, the seal of Philadelphia's district attorney with a circle for the compass and four squares sticking out for the concept of three and four, thus saying square and compass for all the initiated ones. So the circle with a compass, you can make a circle. And here are squares, you know, or this is 90 degrees here too, and there are four of them. So it's the the concept of four, which stands for the square, and this is the concept of three. And it also looks a bit like a, um, 
like the crosshairs you know if you go into the justice department you're like into the crosshairs of them eh? they can do whatever they want with you the very same symbol as the one from before and also concept of three and four square and circle four square and compass can be seen in the film lift from this year 2024 where the image is not at all relevant to the film as it is the case with all these symbols they are showing that have nothing to do with the story told in the film apparently the image shows a square and compass crossing in london and i wonder what the name of this particular crossing is so here you see the same you know it also says a swiss cross here you know we have the swiss re in london so this is the circle for the compass and here's a square so it says square and compass and here the concept of four and it's in black and white almost you know and there's probably a lot more to say this is also a bit weird these things here and this Oh yeah, okay, I see it. With these ones together with this, these four, it is octagon. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, so oh yes, okay. You got the octagon, yes, it's the same thing. You got the octagon defending the inner circle from the square. You know, there are two squares actually here. Yeah. That's amazing, eh? And if you're standing here, you know, uh, boots on the ground, like, you don't see anything. You know, you might be walking there for 20 years, never seen, eh? So the London Octagon Square and Compass was from the movie Lift from this year, 2024, and which you can see here to the left. I imagine a Londoner with his Cockney accent seeing my video. Blimey, mate, lived there all me life and never seen it. Oh, me right showing me first time in me life. Cobblers, why are these mockney wankers hiding on the me kicks? Bloody daft geezers lagging it in the granite when. Well, I haven't been talking like this in a while. Then in the movie The Lost City of Z from 2016 it shows the 101 sun hieroglyph representing the winged sun disk of horus for no obvious reason connected to the story other than to show this pharaonic symbol of her masters in an ancient house or castle so here you can see the film the lost city of z was produced by Brad Pitt, living in France. I went to the castle once. Video is on my channel, Gats of Gats. And here you see the sun hieroglyph. You know, it's one, this is like a one, O, one. And it, it is the, the winged sun disk of Horus. So here's the sun disk. And here are the wings. You can also see it with wings, like the Nazis had it, the Romans, and whatever, and whatnot. Just as the relentless exhibition in nearly every American movie of the biggest pharaonic obelisk in the world in America. As we can see here in the movie, The Last Full Measure from 2019. And once more, in the same movie called The Last Full Measure, and I've already shown you this in one of my videos, that this layout here shows their story throughout time, from Egypt to the Republic, from the Obelisk to the Capitol White House from their old world order royalist vertical rule beginning in egypt 
to that perfect rule over humanity of the New World Order, Republican horizontal rule. So in this image here, what you can see here, it says from Egypt to America. So chronologically, their con conquest of humanity starts here in Egypt with the obelisk. It even says so, the vertical rule here. And then through time, maybe this is also plays a role here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, octagon, eight lawns going to the uh, um, to the republic the perfect rule and this is the horizontal rule so it 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 just shows their how they how they're ruling over humanity you know that i mean it's not by accident the whole layout you know with the obelisk here and this here well this is the symbol in america for the republic for america for the american republic this is the biggest symbol maybe the biggest symbol in the world and this thing here the symbol of the pharaonic domination is really the symbol you know of the death of osiris and for egypt and the vertical rule so they started you know, ruling over humanity and infiltrating other peoples from out of Egypt. And then they walked here. You see the people walking here through the ages. There are eight ages here, octagon, to their perfect rule, their new world order rule over humanity. And the new world order in America, which is just a new aristocratic symbol, no more vertical symbol of the feudal system, but a horizontal system of the Republic. And the New World Order has been already in the US since 1776. So that's not something what all the religious people are waiting for. When does it come? No, it's been there for 250 years in the US, you know. And in Paris, it shows the same from the obelisk at Place de la Concorde to the monument of the Republic in France, Arc de Triomphe, where Arc is from the Greek word Arcos, meaning to rule. So Arc de Triomphe, it says the triumph of ruling in their perfect horizontal Republican New World Order rule. And this is why France gave the statue of no liberty to America and the French Marquis de Lafayette exporting the French Revolution to America. Although the French nobility's revolution came only 13 years after the American one. 13 years, 13 Osiris body parts and 13 stripes in the Knights Templars colors, red and white. So the French Revolution was in 1789 and the American in 1776. There are 13 years difference. And as I explained to you here in America, it's exactly the same layout in Paris. It's a real obelisk, by the way. I went here once and filmed it. And this is Arc de Triomphe. It's really, it's the monument for the French horizontal republic. The same as the capital is the symbol in America for the republic. So as it is in America, they're showing their conquest of humanity chronologically through time from Egypt to America, from the old world order where it started, the vertical rule to the new world order, uh, ver uh, horizontal rule. And here's the same. It's showing their conquest over humanity 
from Egypt to the world's republic, the world's horizontal rule, the world government. Also in the movie, the 355 from 2022, the same thing and showing the same road from Egypt to the Republic, from Egypt to America. And if you add three plus five plus five, you get 13. As the obelisk, in fact, it stands for the number 13, if you want, because Osiris was cut into 13 parts. So this here stands for the 13th body part. And finally, Swissy in the US movie, The Net from 1995, saying the Swiss internet in French, l'internet suisse, bienvenue. So here you see it, Sandro Bullock, The Net, and in the middle of the, an American movie in English, and all of a sudden it says this here, you know, a Swiss flag. Here's a dot CH, which is Confederatia Helvetica, which is the internet code for Swaziland. And here it says in French, not in English or, or German, because most Swissies, they are German speakers. You know, no, it's in French. L'internet suisse. Bienvenue. So, why in French? You should ask yourselves. Well, because Geneva is in the French speaking part of Switzerland, where the notorious CERN is with the large Hadrian Collider and whatnot. And CERN invented the World Wide Web internet in 1989 so that's why in an american movie as you've seen before it showed in french l'internet suisse you know and this is here you see their 666 you know charming logo is a cern accelerating science you know if i move the uh, the cursor on it it starts you know it's accelerating so here it says, the birth of the web. The World Wide Web was invented by British scientist Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 while working at CERN. So here's the guy. So this is the official website of, of CERN. And you punch in about and you can find it. You know. I can scroll down and see if there's anything more. Well, it's like the same like in the in the movie this this year, you know? The old internet computer like stuff. And uh well you can put it here in different languages and here's some news. You know. And um and you have to click here, the birth of the web. So the World Wide Web was invented by British scientist Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 while working at CERN. So that's why it said in French in the movie, because CERN here is in Geneva. Oh, and look at the logo. There's a square and there's a lot of circles. So, you know, it says square and compass, you know, it's all over. He's got it written, you know, all over his face and in his ears, you know, square and compass. So in all these movies, our masters transmit secret messages and secret symbols, thus communicating with each other and to their offspring in this brutal conspiracy against humanity out of Pharaoh's base. Switzerland. Hey, Swissy. The actual Middle East conflict is the same pharaonic war as always, with in this case the Arabic Philistine nobility 
trying to eliminate the newcomers of 1948 by using religion as their main tool. The battle in Gaza is not between the peoples, but between the 1948 newcomers of the Jay Walker nobility here to the left and the Arab Philistine nobility here to the right. So here it says Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild. You know, they are barons, or they look like barons. You see the Maltese Templars cross here, uh, because they are very much Republicans. And here, Alfred de Rothschild. So these also, these are for the horizontal Republican rule. They have to, they need to, because the Jaywalkers, they didn't have any land in Europe. So they needed also a new system. So they really like the Templar system. And these ones are the vertical rule, you know, the feudal system. You can see this here, the slaves, and here are the feudal masters. So here you've got the jaywalkers on one side and you've got the, um, the nobility, not the normal people. And here you've got the Philistine nobility on the other side. That's what the war is about. Just as in Europe, two world wars between the German nobility of the uh, Kaiser uh, Wilhelm II and the British nobility, more or less, you know, the Windsors and the, um, and the Order of the Garter, of course. This is what the war is about. All wars are by the nobility. Here it says Ottoman Empire also called the Caliphate. For the Arab nobility, Gaza and the entire JJ Bays still belong to the Turkish Ottoman Caliphate. Therefore, the Arabic nobility use a religion as a pretext to bring back the Caliphate. Whereas a caliphate was never by God, Allah, nor the people. But a caliphate is a terrible feudal dictatorship by the Oriental nobility. So here you can see the flag with 100 years. And here it says 100 years without the caliphate. So this year, Nine to, um, 2024, it has been exactly 100 years ago that the Caliphate ended um, in 1924. And that happened on March the 3rd. So this March the 3rd, which will be coming up next week, it is exactly 100 years ago that the Caliphate was abolished. And we can all see in the media these terrorist groups, they all want the Caliphate back. So we will see on March the 3rd some very terrible things going on as a celebration, you know, to get back the Caliphate, you know, which ended 100 years ago. So here you can read about the Ottoman Caliphate. That was the last Caliphate. Here's one of their flags. You see, it's you know, it's not by God. All this, you know, it's a uh, it's a nobility coat of arms. You know. So when did it end? Here it says the abolition of the Caliphate in 1924, when the Turkey you know, became from a vertical rule caliphate, a horizontal rule republic by Atatürk. And um, yeah, that's uh, Atatürk, Freemason, because the republic is Freemasonry. And that's why there's a lot of talk, you know, by the 
Catholics and religion, you know, that the the Freemasons are bad, but it's it's exactly the same thing as the vertical rule by the uh, by the caliphates. You know, they're the same people. So here it says here, this is the uh, the chapter about the abolition here. Here, this is the last caliph, and here it says on his initiative. The National Assembly abolished the Caliphate on March 3rd, 1924. So next week we have a March 3rd, 2024. You better watch that date, people. So I punched here today's date and I've got my computer on French. So Lundy, it's Monday. 26 uh, février is February, it's almost the same word, you know, 2024. So I'm telling you this on uh, about uh, March 3rd, 2024, and um, that it's 100 years ago that the Caliphate ended, um, which will be in, uh, in, a, in a week's time, or even less, maybe five days. Yeah, five days. So. I won't be finishing this video um, on that date. So we are five days shy of the date and I'll probably publish this video a couple of days after because it's a, it's a lot of work doing this. Sometimes I need two or three weeks to make a video. Yeah. So when at this date, you know, all shit hits the fan and I'm coming like three days after like saying, well, you know, this day, this and this will happen. You have to know that I'm, I'm saying this five days before. It needs a vertical war against our masters to stop all the horizontal wars in between the peoples. Hamas is a tool by the Arabic nobility and the JJ Bay's state belongs to the Jay Walker nobility, like the barons of Rothschild, the Levi Strauss nobility and others. Therefore, on October 7th, the JJ Bay's state left the door open in order to mobilize the jaywalkers to be ready in their hearts and minds to wage war for their lords of the jaywalker nobility. The Gaza war is as usual an inner war within Pharaoh's nobility and the people have to fight it for them. This time it's not the German nobility, but it is the Arabic nobility who wants the jaywalkers dead and gone. And as crazy as it looks, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the rest of his jaywalker nobility in Parliament had to sacrifice 1,200 innocent jaywalkers in the JJ Bays on October 7th in order to save the whole country and to make the people of the JJ Bays ready to fight for their lives. So I wrote it down for you here. Here it says NWO. I can't pronounce it because of the censorship. So it's on the left side NWO. On the right side, it says OWO. This is old, and this means world, and this is order. And this here is new. It's the horizontal rule versus the old vertical rule of the royalist, feudal, Arabic nobility of the caliphate. And this here is the Republican Jaywalker nobility. Of course, there's also Arabic Republicans like Egypt here or Turkey 
uh, Turkey became a republic in 1924 on March 3rd. So it doesn't really matter if Egypt or Turkey, if their religion, if there are Muslims or Arabs, just like the one, these ones here and the, the, the poor Philistines, as they say. No, that doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters is if they are of the NWO, Republican, or the old WO, Royalists like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, they're all um, absolute monarchies. They're not constitutional monarchies. Some of these countries here in Europe, they have a constitutional monarchy, you know, and the constitution is Republican and WO, horizontal rule. But these countries, they are absolute monarchies. They, ha they don't have the... Um, the Knights Templar Constitution of the Republic. It's a direct rule. These guys, they govern directly all the way down to the people without any intermediary. Like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai. They are uh, feudal caliphate dictatorships you know, with no freedom. So these countries here, like Egypt, Turkey, and many others, they can flip any moment. Because like the people, they feel like more attracted to this here because of the religion and the ethnicity. But the government is this here to the left, you know, they're Republican and uh, Freemason rule. But they can, ch they can flip any moment. And if that happens, we got a world, a world war on our hands, probably. Then the whole NWO, the whole new system, you know, to rule over the worldwide slaves, it, it would collapse. So it is in fact an internal war between the Arabic nobility to the right and the Jay Walker nobility. So the Gaza war is an internal war, in fact, of the nobility. And these nobilities are both of pure pharaonic Erev Rav, or the Jay Walker nobility, and also the um, the um, the Arabic uh, nobility. So it's the traditional war between the all the OWO vertical rule of the royalists and the NWO horizontal rule of the republicans, the JJ Bays, USA, Europe, Turkey, and Egypt are all NWO Republicans. And countries like Qatar, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and of course the House of Windsor, they want the vertical rule, royal caliphate for Gaza and the Philistines, for which they use religious zealots like Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, IS, and whatnot who wrongly think that the caliphate is by Allah and for the people. They have no idea what they're actually fighting for in reality. Blinded by religion and by the lies of the Arabic nobility, the religious Muslim zealots don't see that in fact the caliphate is to reinstall Pharaoh of the Arabic nobility. So this Pharaoh's nobility in Arabic, they call it Fir'an. Pharaoh is Fir'an. So the caliphate is Fir'an. And this is why the IS, you know, in their black flag, they were raping children and terrorizing people, torturing people. You know, these are not things you do in a religion, you know, you're not supposed to do this. And these are the things the nobility has always been doing. Raping like a harem and torturing people, put them in a dungeon. And this is Fir'an. 
So as many Muslims believe, you know, the IS, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. And even I met white people, you know, Europeans, like, who believe that the, the IS was set up by the CIA, which is complete nonsense. They have no proof for it at all. You know, the only th ones, you know, who have an advantage, you know, by founding the IS and their black flag, who want the caliphate, you know, is the ones who really are the caliphate or really were the caliphate, the descendants of it, the nobility. You know, the CIA is of a Republican state, which is a horizontal rule. They do not want a vertical rule. So it's complete nonsense. As most of the stuff in the internet is nonsense. The media are telling nonsense and then there's the controlled opposition. It's all nonsense. Where does the name Hamas come from? Hamas is an anagram for Sham or the land of Al Sham, which combines Syria, Philistine, Lebanon, and Jordan, which indicates what it's all about, namely to install the Caliphate of Sham or the Caliphate of Al Sham. What in fact the IS aimed to do and what Hamas also wants. Now look at the Hamas letters H A M A S. Now just toss them around and you get Sham or Al Sham, meaning that Hamas has nothing to do with religion and in fact violates the valors of Islam. So it says Hamas is an anagram for Sham. So this part of the world here is Sham. So this here is the JJ base here. Or here it says Philistine. I can't pronounce the name, neither the other name for the because of the censorship. Here's Jordan, this is Syria, and this is Lebanon. Altogether, this is Hamas. Here's the Al-Aqsa sign. So, here it says Hamas is Sham. It says Sham includes present-day Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan, extending from the Euphrates River to the Sinai. So this is actually what they mean from the rivers to the sea. This is not the Jordan River to the Mediterranean, no. It has all to do with the Caliphate. From the river to the sea is from the Euphrates rivers to the Red Sea here and to the, the Mediterranean. So the rivers are here to here and here. This is what I mean, what it means. So Hamas is sham. Don't trust the media. They're telling you a lot of nonsense. But the media are good, you know, to, you know, to see what's going on. But they don't tell you why it's going on, neither who is behind what's going on. In this video, I tell you all what it's all about, because my house taught me so since I was 12 years old, from one generation to the other, in the French diaspora in South Africa. And I explain what my house is in this video here. I made it five years ago. Here's the title in the same channel. When I was a young homie Ross at school in South Africa, there was a boy with big flappy ears, which we called chimp ears. At that time, we didn't know how true that was, because now, 50 years later, it has been proven genetically that humans share no less than 98.8% DNA with a chimpanzee. That's almost 99%.
it says 98.8% DNA, which they have in common. And when I recently saw a picture of this alleged terrorist by the name of Yahya Sinwar, I automatically had to think back at my school time in South Africa and that boy in our school who was in fact just as myself of the white race. So just look at the ears, you know, because it's hereditary, that's why it's important. Here are the ears, and it says Yahya, Sin and War. A chimpanzee has these typical protruding ears and narrow eyes close together, what approximately 1% of humans also have, which is also hereditary from one generation to the other, as you can see here with young Prince Charles and his son Harry. Now King Charles had his protruding ears operated, so it doesn't show anymore that much. So here you can see Mr. Sin, Mr. Sin and War. You know, I don't want to call his name anymore. I just call him Mr. Sin and War. You can see the same ears of uh, young Prince Charles. He had it operated now. And here is the young Prince Harry also the same ears of his father. And he also had it operated, obviously. And this is the guy I once filmed, you know, and he was sticking his tongue out, you know, like a reptilian. Um, I even found his name. So here he is from that film. His name is Andrew Gailey, G-A-I-L-E-Y. He see his tongue a little bit coming out, but he was really sticking it out and got really quickly like a snake, you know, a couple of times, you know. And uh, I can't say the word, you know. And he was the housemaster in Eton of the, um, of the princes. The video is, this is the title, and it's on my channel, Homeland Security, from, uh, it's from two years ago. So uh, his name is Andrew Gailey, and he also had these funny ears, you know, protruding ears. They all seem to have it, you know, around the uh, the Windsor Palace. Well, it's Sach, you know, Windsach, the king, you know, and there's a lot of inbreeding. So here you can read about the protruding ears. It says here the um, Def the deformity can be corrected any time after five years of age. So of course, they did it with all of them in the uh, the royal house. Of course, yeah. And um, yeah, and they all have it. You know, Mister Sin and War, Prince Charles, his son, and many more. I'm, I'm going to show that to you. So th there must be some sort of a hereditary connection here. For scientific purposes only, I want to make a collage comparison of Prince Charles, Prince Harry, and Yahya Sin and War with the chimpanzee, in order to compare the chimp characteristics of the narrow eyes and protruding ears with these worrisome characters in actual politics. But I didn't dare to, because of the fucktube censorship and its bogus rules. Since all wars and bloodsheds come out of Pharaoh's nobility and its open and hidden bloodlines, I wonder about the following. So what I'm getting at is if the warlord Yahya, Sin and War is related to the House of Windsor, who both carry the same hereditary protruding ears and narrow eyes. The British Empire ruled over Philistine for 32 years, 
from 1916 to 1948, which is called the Mandatory Philistine, after the British Empire drove the Caliphate out in 1916. And isn't it that's why we hear all the time of bringing back the Caliphate? So here it says, Mandatory Philistine from 1920 to 1948. Well, actually, it's from 1916, but officially 1920. But here, after an Arab uprising against the Ottoman Empire arose during the First World War in 1916, British forces drove Ottoman forces out of the Levant. Yeah, so nine. Uh, practically since 1916. So you can read it yourself here. Now here it says, Mandatory Philistine. And this is very important. Well, it's, it's quite long, so you can look it up yourself. So theoretically, the British nobility had all the time to procreate a bloodline of sleeper agents, which is what Pharaoh's nobility has always done. As blood is thicker than water, as the proverb goes, and only the own bloodlines can be fully trusted. So here it says, blood is thicker than water and look at his ears the guy with the tongue you know, also the same ears so also probably same bloodline another sleeper agent they did the same in afghanistan by the way haven't you noticed that nato's occupation of afghanistan lasted exactly one generation 20 years to procreate and train bloodline sleepers who look afghan from the outside but are pharaonic inside also the romans have done this with the white tribes of europe so here it says the fall of afghanistan 20 years of imperialist meddling imperialist that means an empire the british empire and look at the badge of the afghan dude here it's a pyramid you know <laughs> that's what it means the pharaohs are in control now and even the taliban it's all infiltrated and you know it's not the same taliban anymore just look at the comparison of the alleged terrorist mr sin and war and King Charles, maybe the British Empire, wants Philistine back. Even more so, listening to Prince William, who's telling the jaywalkers to stop killing the Philistine terrorists, while Prince William is a killer of Muslims himself, who killed innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. So, this is what he says here you can read the whole thing and he says here i like i like so many others want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible so it, it, he says he doesn't want to uh, to have the hamas killed you know and i think the reason is quite obvious as i just showed you the pictures before the hereditary pictures uh, here it says Prince William and Prince Harry have killed many innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. And if you look at this image here with the swastika, you know, this family seems to be obsessed and um, with wars and fascinated with, you know, murdering innocent civilians. You know, what exactly, you know, what the Nazis did, especially in killing you know, uh, defenseless jaywalkers, you know, which 
what he's saying here, stop defending yourself, you know, will lead to the same thing as what you can see here on his arm. Prince William's brother, Prince Harry, recently wrote a book called Spare, in which he's boasting to have killed even more Afghans than his brother William. The killer prince boasted to have killed at least 25 Afghan Muslims. So here it says, here you see him in his Apache chopper. Prince Harry reveals he killed 25 in Afghanistan. That's what the British media said. And Prince Harry admitted to killing 25 people during his military service, confessing he's neither proud nor ashamed of it. Oh, he's not ashamed, eh? Well, that's why he announced it and the book is called spare i mean spare spare what spare tire sparing the muslims no not really sparing the jaywalkers no neither with his swastika on his arm so what's spare must be a spare tire then so here it says hey see him again with the chopper in uh, afghanistan uh, with the swastika it says, Jolly Good Fox Hunting in Afghanistan, st starring Prince Harry. So, you know, it's funny actually that they call the chopper a, an Apache. It's like, I mean, they were, at, they were at war, like America, with the Apaches. So, why the conquered people, you know, why give them the honor of an Apache chopper? You know, maybe in 10 years, the choppers are called Hamas, you know, when they conquered Hamas. And it's weird, isn't it? So here you see the other one, Prince William here as well. In Afghanistan, here you see the, uh, the, the Afghans, the Pashtuns probably. And here it says, a jolly good fox hunting in Afghanistan. Coat name. Wales for the killer princes. So here it says Wales. It's there. It's their code name. And in Wales, you know, there's the Celtic people living there. They speak a Celtic language, you know. It's another conquered people for which they use the name, just like the Apaches, you know. So it's not really far off, you know, that the next chopper will be called Hamas or, or Philistine or, or Jaywalker or whatever, you know. You, you can see this. Another conquered people, the Celts. You know, by the Roman Empire. Well, who was the Roman Empire? The elites are all pharaohs who came um, after the uh, Germanic tribes uh, uh, sacked Rome. They came to France and became the nobility. So I guess these killer princes are the very last to utter a single word on the Gaza war. And just look again at the comparison of Killer Prince Harry with Yahya Sinwar, Mr. Sin and War. They could very well share a couple of hereditary genes of the Royal Pharaonic House of Windsor. Only the nobility can raise an army and an organization like Hamas. Nobody else can do this. And this is what these pharaohs have been doing for thousands of years. They fight another people from the inside out. And even before the British Empire ruling over Philistine, the Ottoman Caliphate brought their amount of aristocrats into Philistine whose descendants are still there, partially. So here is an octagon here. You know, it's universal for the nobility, you know, uh, with an inner circle here. So the octagon is protecting the inner circle. I don't see a square here, but there must be something, you know. And now I want you to look at these incredible long noses, you know. This one too here, all of them. Now look at this one, and this one here. 
incredibly long. And this is not something, you know, as people say, you know, the jaywalkers, not at all. It's the nobility, you know, look at how long. And I'll give you some examples. Look, here are some pharaonic noses. This is Ramses the Great, same sort of nose, you know, like you just saw before of all the caliphs of the Ottoman Caliphate. This is Louis the Fourteenth, same nose, very long, and you know it doesn't go in like this here; it goes all straight, like like here, like his as well. And here another pharaoh, well, he's got the same nose as uh, Louis the Fourteenth, you know? and it's all the same race ruling over humanity, both in the Orient and in Europe, and they come out of ancient Egypt, like here and here and this because they are the same same noses as the uh, caliphs so this is why we have all the muslims in europe because the noses wanted it like that you know and this here is ivan the terrible now look at the nose the same nose as Louis the Fourteenth, as Pharaoh Ramses the Second, as the caliphs of the Ottoman Empire. It's all the same race. And here, the other one, it's called Lilliputin, the even more terrible. And look how long his nose is. It is going in here though. It's not like straight, but it's 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 very long. You know, Europeans don't have this. You know, it's all the same. Uh, this is all, he was the first Tsar of Russia, Ivan the Terrible. Well, let's hope this is the last Tsar, you know, so we get done with it. Eh? Ivan the Terrible and Lily Putin the Terrible. So here I added a third one, and they all cut the same ears. Look at it. And look at this ear here. It's, it's very much like this one here. And um, so this is Amin al Husseini of the uh, Philistine nobility, al Husseini, very important family. And you all see the long nose here. Eh? I just showed you a whole lot of long noses, like Ivan the Terrible and uh, the caliphs of the Ottoman Empire. Well, he's got it as well. Eh? Narrow eyes, narrow eyes, narrow eyes. So now look at the comparison between the Philistine Amin al Husseini here all the way to the left, Yahya Sin and War in the middle, and young Prince Charles, who all have the same narrow eyes and protruding ears, and therefore might very well be related family wise. And I mean, Al Husseini was in the same business in wiping out jaywalkers as he was the head of the two Muslim SS divisions, Hanjar and Skanderbeg, who did a real jihad genocide in the Balkans during World War II, murdering 400,000 innocent European civilians just to give you an idea what's coming at us so here you see him i mean al husseini doing the nazi salute in front of the muslim soldiers on european soil here's his name i mean al husseini of the arabic nobility al husseini and here it says ss division hanshar or the, in english this is a j hanjar and SS Division Skanderbeg, sometimes written with a K here. And this is their logo. This sword is the Oriental sword. It's called the Hanjar. Amin al Husseini met Hitler on November the 28th, 1941, while staying four years in Nazi Germany until the end of the war. In 1945, and he also met Mussolini in October 
1941. And here you can see him together with Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS. And here you can see him again in front of a lot of, well, the row was a bit longer going all the way to here, a lot of Muslim soldiers on European soil doing the Nazi salute once more. And these, here's his name, Hajj Amin al Hussein. Yeah, Hajj, it means he went to Mecca on a Hajji. So these are, these are the sort of things he said today. Arabs, rise as one man and fight for your sacred rights. Kill the jaywalkers wherever you find them. This pleases God, history and religion. This saves your honor. God is with you. And today, 80 years later, we hear the very same words by Mr. Sin and War here, Yahya Sin and War and his organization here, the Sham al-Sham. So, you know, same rhetorics, same ears, and very much, most likely, the same bloodline. I mean, al-Husseini was of the al-Husseini Philistine nobility, and a friend of Adolf Hitler, and a friend of the head of the SS, Heinrich Himmler. All these wars, bloodsheds and genocides are done by the nobility out of Pharaoh's aristocracy. So here he is. And I mean Al Husseini, you know, all these Arabic names, Al Husseini and Al Saud, it means it's nobility. It's like the German von or the French de, you know, von Stauffenberg, you know. And von Hohenzollern, you know, and uh, Guillaume de Nogari, it's all nobility, and the Arabs, they have Al. And here it says, Al Husseini was the scion, I'll show you what the word scion means in a minute, of the Al Husseini family of the Jerusalemite Arab nobles, a nobleman, you see who trace their origins to the Islamic prophet Mohammed. Well, maybe that's where the ears come from. And I know another one who also been traced to the prophet Mohammed. So here's some more uh, on Amin al Husseini, And here it says, in fact, the Husseinis dominated the prestigious post of Mufti in Jerusalem from the late 18th century until the 20th with few interruptions, and they occupied several others of the city's important political, diplomatic, and religious uh, positions. With their considerable influence in the city, the family was this very much part of Jerusalem's nobility. Yeah, It's the nobility of Pharaoh. And they owned significant land in and around Jerusalem as well as across Philistine. As a historian described the Husseinis, the family had become, become landed aristocrats wielding considerable political power. Um, together with the Khalidis, Alamis, Jarallas, and Nasha Shibis, you know, it's all nobility. Well, the article goes on and uh, you can find it yourself. The word scion means the heir to a throne. It says the heir to a throne or a guardian, a descendant of a distinguished uh, family. It's all the uh, etymology of the word here, yeah, scion. And as the Knights Templars thought to be heir to the throne, and therefore had to make the new horizontal rule Republican NWO system of the nobility. Therefore, the Knights Templars called the place around the temple of King Solomon Zion or Sion, as they thought to be the legitimate heirs or scions of the throne. It says from Middle English, Sion and Old French, Sion. And the word, you know, 
it's still spo um, spoken like this and written like this in French. You know, it's almost the forbidden word. As I've already told you many times that the elders of Zion are in fact the elders of the Priory of Zion, which was a Templar's commandery in the Swiss town of Sion or Sion as they speak French in that Swiss town and the Templars also spoke French. And as the Templars originally spoke French, the French word for Zion or Zionist is still written with an S, pronouncing it as Sion or Sioniste. That's why the political movement of Zionism derived from the nobility and three British lords of the Balfour Declaration, as only the nobility knows what it's all about. Today, those poor jaywalkers are stuck with the word Zionism, which is not even theirs, which they don't even understand what it means and what half the world hates. So, so much for God's chosen, who don't even know their own history and have no clue what's really going on. So here you see the Knights Templars, here you see Swissy. And um, as uh, this town of uh, Sion, where they speak French, is in Switzerland, it still exists, right? where the Priory of Sion was. And this is the original way of writing Sion. And, um, and from the old French, it's without the C, it's S-I-O-N. And um, so the elders of the Priory of Sion, and they are the heirs to the throne of King Solomon. And King Solomon was married with the daughter of Pharaoh, as it says in the Bible. You know, it's it's all turning around uh, this, you know, the Temple of Solomon and Knights Templars. And um, yeah, so in those days they wrote Sion, this Sion here, meaning an heir to the throne without the C, even in English, they wrote it S I O. N. And as these Knights Templars, they wanted to be the heirs of the throne, making the new horizontal Republican NWO system. And this is what it's about. From what I heard from my house when I was a kid, it was actually the Russian Tsar nobility or around the Tsar, who wrote this book uh, of pages, The Elders of the Priory of Sion, or just The Elders of Sion, because they hated the Templars that much, who wanted to kill the Tsars, you know, to with the revolution and make uh, the new aristocratic system of the, uh, the Republicans and horizontal rule. Whereas the uh, the old the OWO of the Tsars and the old uh, Russian nobility, they were of course the vertical rule and um, the feudal system, and um, so they were very much afraid of these um, of the Priory of Sion, actually, the Knights Templars. The pharaohs were already in Gaza five and a half thousand years ago in Tel Es Sakan, which is five kilometers south of Gaza city. And you better believe they never left and that their descendants are still there and became the ruling aristocratic families of Philistine and Gaza like the al Husseini dynasty, together with the Khalidis, Al-Lamais, Jarralas and Nasha Shibis, the type of ruling elite who always want more, 
without working for it, as the nobility always did worldwide, and of course including the very much existing Oriental nobility and their science, who just want to grab everything for which the jaywalkers worked for in the JJ base. Of course, this idea doesn't please very much the jaywalker nobility, like Baron de Rothschild, the Levi and Strauss nobility, who own the JJ base and their jaywalker slaves. So the Gaza war is basically a war between the Arab nobility and the jaywalker nobility. Whereas the worldwide media portray the Gaza war as a war between the jaywalkers and the Philistines, which is entirely wrong. We're being played as usual. It's not a war in between the peoples. So here you see a Philistine, an Arab, with a tablecloth on his head or something. Here you see the Jay runners or the jaywalkers uh, running as usual. So this is the people and this is the people. And here it says, from the river to the sea, Philistine will be free. This is what I told you about. You know, and it's not from the Jordan River, as they say, till the um, the Mediterranean. No, this is what I told you. It's about Hamas, which is Sham, and it's from the U Euphrates River to the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. It's all about Sham. You know, it's not about just this here. So this is what it is again about the river to the sea. It says again, Sham includes present day Syria, Palestine, Philistine, Lebanon and Jordan extending from the Euphrates river, from the river to the Sinai. So to the sea here, yeah, this is the uh, Sinai here yeah, and this is the sea and here's the sea. It's all about Sham, which is Hamas. Hamas is Sham. Hamas is an anagram for Sham, you know, as the nobility always covers up things, you know, and the nobility in this case is the caliphate. So here it says Tel As Sakan, yeah, it means the hill of ash is now almost entirely destroyed. Uh, tell or archaeological mound standing some five kilometers south of Gaza city. And what is today the Gaza Strip on the northern bank of Wadi Gaza? It was the site of two separate early Bronze Age urban settlements, and earlier one re representing the fortified administrative center of the Egyptian colonies in southwestern Philistine. From the end of the fourth millennium, yeah, that's 6,000 years ago, and a later local Canaanite fortified city of the third millennium. The location of the mouth was of what was probably a paleo channel of the river allowed it to develop as an important maritime settlement with the natural. Its geographical location and here of the position of importance of the crossroad of land based trade routes between Canaan and the old kingdom of uh, Egypt. As of 2000, the early Egyptian settlement was the oldest fortified site known to researchers in both Egypt and Philistine. Uh, well, it goes on, you can read it yourself. So here it is, this is Gaza. So, you know, they're all fighting, you know, about this, Philistine and, you know, the jaywalkers, they say, oh, it belongs to us. And then the, the Philistines, they say, oh, it belongs to us. But who was the first? That was Pharaoh. So who, to whom does it really belong? Yeah, the Pharaoh, and they're the nobility, you know, and and they make all the rules, you know. And this is what the fight is about. Yeah, the Egyptian city, the Bronze Age, age port dates to the end of the fourth millennium BC and was contemporary with En Bezor. 
an Egyptian first dynasty staging post along the ways of Horus, trade routes in the northern Negev, and Bezor, Zor, you know, that's from Sar, meaning the king or pharaoh, was much smaller, but it was an important source for fresh water to supply the caravans. There were also some other small Egyptian settlements in this area. The architectural remains as well as most of all of the findings from area A are typical of the Nile Valley around 3000 BC. The only other Egyptian settlement in this area that was older than Es Sakan was Taur uh, Ik Bene. And here's this En Bezor. We can have a look at it. You know, it's it's near the Gaza Strip, you know, so it's full of pharaonic stuff there, you know. It's not like as they, uh, here's the En Habazor. It's, uh, well, where this, the October 7 massacre was like, you know. It's probably one of those kibbutz now or something. And uh, um, anyway, pharaohs were already there five and a half thousand years ago. And they left descendants who are now the nobility, either, you know, jaywalker nobility and Arab nobility. And this is what the fight's about. So here it says the history of Philistine, and I'll let you read it yourself. Yeah, it's it's quite long, you know. But what I what I find interesting here, it's about the chapter about the Egyptian dominance here, and yeah, this all of this was called Canaan, and um, and Canaan. There's the word ka, it means the soul when you're still alive. It's a demotic, pharaonic word, and kena, an, you know, on, it's from on, you know, Osiris. So it's, uh, you know, it's all about here Egyptian and, and the Egyptian withdrew from the area and uh, Hazor. Yeah, well, where is this one? Galilee and uh, so you know the, the pharaohs that were here you know already five and a half thousand years back and um, they became the nobility and this is what I want to emphasize at you know this oriental nobility use religion to unify and mobilize the people to make them believe they're fighting a just war and go straight to paradise when they murder a couple of jaywalkers all blessed by allah to murder rape mutilate torture and lie. Just as the Nazis made a religion out of this here. This here is the same Hamas Hitler technique to unify and to mobilize the people behind an identitarian idea and a widespread uniformed symbol in a total dictatorship by our masters of Pharaoh's nobility, who created religion in the first place back then in ancient Egypt, in order to subjugate the dumb slaves through invisible hocus pocus. You know, when I see this, you know, with texts here holding it up and with a megaphone shouting with a Philistine flag and the, the tablecloth here and here over their heads, you know, I have to think of, you know, a political movement, you know, and not a religion. Uh, it says here, massacre those who insult Islam. I mean, this is political and even worse. 
He says, freedom, go to hell. And the G is made out of two crescent moons here. Now, charming, isn't it? So personally, I must say that Islam is not a religion anymore. But Islam has become a political movement that is aggressively protesting in all the capital cities of all nations in the world and shouting murder and genocide of the jaywalkers and all other religions. So here it says, behead those who insult Islam. And this is in, um, in, in, in a European city, in England, this year. Massacre those who insult Islam. You know, it's, it's like what I'm saying. You know, they're calling for murder and, and here, I don't know, it's also a European or an American city. It says, keep the world clean and to put the, uh, the JJ base state in the garbage can here. I think this is hardly, you know, religious. You know, this is political. This is political and this here, no, it's even worse. You know, this is, it's not even political. This is, uh, you know, this, there's no diplomacy, diplomacy or something, you know. This is plain murder. Crime, this is crime. War. So it's, you know, in my eyes, if I see this, I, I don't think of a religion. I think of a political movement, you know, that has even got worse than a political movement. These are not the acts of a peaceful religion, but these are the acts of a worldwide brutal political movement, shouting instead of contemplation and murder instead of compassion. So this was also in England. It says here, yeah, slay those who insult Islam. Europe, you will pay. Demolition is on its way. Oh, that's a nice rhyme, eh? Europe, you will pay. Demolition is on its way. Behead those who insult Islam. Butcher those who mock Islam. Uh, Europe, you will pay. And extermination is on its way way of well, charming and this is happening in european cities and again if i see this it doesn't make me think of religion but it makes me think of a um well of two things you know it makes me think of a political movement and it makes me think of a mob anyway since 2005 islam as a religion has been dead officially when the Arabic nobility of Al Saud blew up the Jamarat, where the Hajis threw stones at the three obelisks in order to kill Iblis. So here you can see it's an obelisk and they were all throwing stones. And here it says Jamarat 2005, it's the end of Islam officially and that's what real Muslims told me you know and um, so they were throwing stones at the obelisk well, not a bad thing I would say because of this and the destruction of the Jamarat the Hajj to Mecca is not valid anymore and the Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam that has crumbled as it has been prophesied that in the end times Islam as a religion will disappear. This, these will be the signs, one of the signs of the end times in Islam. So in 2005, here it says again, Jamarat, 2005, you know, they blew up with explosives the, uh, this year. So they couldn't throw stones at Pharaoh anymore. And they replace it with three ovals. Of course, there are three for the concept of three, which is the uh, the old world order. And now there are three ovals, three of these here. 
you know, like uh, like the Oval Office, you know, or like uh, yeah. So this is TSS today, and this is before two thousand and five. And here you can see the actual footage of how the Jamarat was blown up. Even here, there's the three of these here, and there were three obelisks. Here you can see the explosion going on here. You know. It says here the old Jamarats were blown up and replaced with new ones. So the footage can be seen on my channel. Gatse Frats here. It's 12 years ago from 2012. And here's the title. So, and now there's nothing to be, find, to be found about this anymore. Not in Wikipedia, nowhere. And of course, no footage anymore. You know, they completely hide it, what happened here. Of course, these pharaohs or Fir'aun of the Ar Arabic nobility didn't like it very much that the slaves were throwing stones at these three pharaonic obelisks in Mecca, at the Jamarat. Because the obelisk is the symbol of pharaonic domination. Pharaonic domination as through the house of Al Saud, who therefore blew up the Jamarat in 2005. So here it says Pharaoh Al Saud. So here you see a couple of dudes of the I know, four, probably, of the royal dynasty of Al Saud, together with their beloved pharaonic obelisk in, uh, in Washington, D.C., in America. So, you know, you can see here how they love it, you know, to be near their obelisk here. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't do this, right? You get it? All these, this is the pharaonic nobility, and they're worldwide. You know, you get them in Europe, you get them in Asia. The jaywalkers have them, and of course the Arabs have them. Why not? You know, all peoples have them. And we're all being dominated by Pharaoh's nobility. And of course they didn't like it, you know, that the slaves, they threw stones at their beloved obelisks at the Jamarat during the Hajj in Mecca. So they blew it up and destroyed it, you know. I think the obelisks themselves were not destroyed, you know, they're just the uh, the foundation, as you'll see that if you see the uh, the video footage. They probably kept the obelisk somewhere. Of course, a pharaoh does not destroy an obelisk, right? So officially, Islam has been dead since 2005. And what's left of it is murder, rape, torture, takia, and violent protests of this political movement that wants more land like the Caliphate for the nobility on the land of Al-Sham. It's the Oriental nobility who want the vertical rule feudal Caliphate back and use religion for that goal so the slaves can identify themselves under a common denominator. Just as the Nazis did with their pan-Germanism to unify the dumb slaves into a single fighting unit for the nobility. So here it says play and slay, which for these ones would be Pray and slay. Here it says, pray and slay. And the other ones, play and slay. And these ones here do pray and slay with an E as in predator of the, the predator of Pharaoh's nobility. Here it says, pray and slay. So we got play and slay, pray and slay with an A and pray and slay with an E. 
it's always the same technique, which is another proof we're dealing with the same people behind the screens over and over again throughout the entire history. All these terrorist groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, Al Qaeda, the IS, and whatnot, they all want the caliphate. So we can all be slaves in a feudal vertical rule by Pharaoh's nobility. Cool. In Gaza and the entire Philistine, many emperors and their elite dominated and left their nobility descendants at a certain time in period from Egyptian pharaohs, Babylonians, Persians, Greek, Romans, Ottoman Empire, the British Empire and many more. And they've been fighting over that particular piece of land ever since and leaving their consecutive nobility after each conquest, who now all claim a piece of the cake, while mobilizing the various commoners to do the war for them. So here on the side, here's the side of the JJ base, and where they say we are not Netanyahu, this is the people. And here is the Gaza side, the people again, we are not Hamas. And this is exactly what it is, you know. It's the nobility fighting over this, over the, this piece of land, and also how to rule it, most of all. Vertical versus horizontal. So here it says the history of Philistine. I have to take other words, you know, otherwise, like for this here, I have to take other words, otherwise the, the censorship will take away my uh, video. So they were all here, you know, all these emperors and empires of the nobility, of basically Pharaoh's nobility, and they've all been fighting over the land. So it says, strategically situated between three continents, the region of Philistine, also known as the land of the JJ base. I can't pronounce this word, I'm sorry. It's full censorship. And the Holy Land has a tumultuous history as a crossroads for religion, culture, commerce and politics. Philistine is the birth birthplace of the Jay Walker religion and um, Christianity and has been controlled by many kingdoms and powers including there we go ancient Egypt ancient Jay Walker JJ Bays the Persian Empire Alexander the Great and his successor so the Greek you know the Hasmoneans, the Roman Empire, several Muslim caliphates and the Crusaders. In modern time, the area was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, then the British Empire. And since 1948, it has been divided into the JJ Bays, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. So they've been fighting over it for ages and the um, Pharaoh's nobility after each empire they left their descendants here and this is the problem look here it says that Amin al Husseini is from a noble family I have to tell you this again because it's very important so here it says al Husseini was the scion you remember scion of the al Husseini family of Jerusalemite Arab nobles who traced the origins to the Islamic prophet Muhammad? Look at the ears, eh? So, Husseini is from a noble family. And he has the same ears and narrow eyes as King Charles and Prince Harry. So, look at the ears, this one and these. It says here, Amin al Husseini, this is Mr. Sin and War. And this is Charles the Third. All these narrow eyes and big floppy ears. You know, 
and it is hereditary. And here the other picture of Charles once more from 1967. Here says HRH, it means His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, probably, or yeah. And HRH in French, it is SAR, Son Altesse Royale. And which is, in fact, his official title, both SAR and for the people, it's HRH. But amongst themselves, they call it SAR because SAR, it means uh, the king or the queen in the demotic pharaonic language. Very important for them. They know they are the pharaoh. And why else would Amin's brother? whom you can see here, Kamil al Husseini, be made a companion of the British nobility's secret order of Saint Michael and Saint George. Huh? As whereas the nobility only accept their own bloodlines in those orders and those closely related to it with the same ears and eyes. So here it says here. So here's the name, Kamil Al Husseini, the same family, here written a bit differently. And the British also made him a companion of the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. Oh, there you can see the order. And he was succeeded by his brother Mohammed Amin Al Husseini. Oh. I think he's got the same ears. Well, at least he got the same hat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's the the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. And Saint George, you know, that is the um, the protector of the Knights Templars. And so he's part of the nobility. You know, there's no doubt. They only give these orders to each other. You know, to their own bloodlines. They don't give it to the people, the commoners. So here you see the order of Saint Michael and Saint George. And it says it's named in honor of two military saints, Michael and George. So here you see the Templars cross. And here um, it says knight commander and the red cross is the cross of saint george and in the middle you got uh, saint michael and the whole thing here this here is a uh, in an octagon you know because um, that's the top of the nazi templars and here you got a lot of uh, Grand masters, you know, they're all princes and kings and earls here, the Earl of Ethland, the Earl of Halifax, the Duke of Kent, and the Prince Adolphus, you know, the Prince George, and many, many, many others. So, you know, you really think they would just give it to some. Bedouins of, of Gaza or something. You know, th this is what the media is portraying. That the, um, right here you can see it. So the cross is the cross of St. George. And here you've got uh, St. Michael. Military saints, it says, eh? And, um, so here's a lot of, you know, it says knights and dames of the Grand Cross, you know. It's all like sir, sir, and lord, and, you know, you must be a, a diplomat and a, and a governor, you know, in order to get this, or a sultan. You see, the sultans, they get it as well. This one here, on a throne of Zanzibar. Uh, you know, British diplomats, and you just don't get it like this, you know. 
And in the Gaza war, you know, the media, they portrayed the, um, the people in, in Gaza, the Philistines, as, you know, some simple, you know, like Bedouins or Arabic, you know, commoners like, you know. But they're not commoners, these ones here, you know. A commoner doesn't get like the the order of St. Michael and St. George. You, you just don't get it, you know. So this is what I want to emphasize on, that there is a, a very powerful nobility in Gaza and in Philistine, a, a, an Arabic Ottoman nobility out of Pharaoh, you know, and they work together, you know, with the, um, the British royal house. This is what I want to show you here. Look, the queen was wearing the order here, where the red cross represents Saint George, the saint protector of the Knights Templars. And that's why the Knights Templars, uh, one of the reasons they have a red cross. And the bloke with the dagger, in the middle is Saint Michael. And all these kings, queens, princes, and princesses being in the order. So you really think the British royal house would just give the order to some Philistine Bedouin? No, this is the noble Al Husseini dynasty, undoubtedly related to the Windsor, if you look at the ears. Uh, so here she's with uh, Prince uh, Philip. And um, here is the Order of St. Michael and St. George. So in the middle, there's the guy in the dagger, you just saw it before, and the Red Cross. Very much related to the Red Templar's Cross is the Order of St. George. And here you see, it's written here, Kamin al Husseini. It's written differently than before. Well, this is because Arabic is not being written in Latin letters, but in Arabic letters. So you can write it down the way you want, actually. You know? But usually the Kamil is written like this, and the other one, Amin, his brother, is written differently. And look at the ear, you know, it's going all the way to here. Look at it. Really big. Same as his brother, you know. So here's a better picture of the order of St. Michael and St. George. So the red cross is St. George here in an octagon, and this is St. Michael. And this is what she's wearing here. So here again, the brother Amin al Husseini, there he is. And uh, here it says once more that Amin al Husseini is related to the Prophet of Islam by the name of Muhammad. And in fact, so is King Charles III of Britain, a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Through Zaida of Seville, a Muslim princess from the 11th century who converted to Christianity and became the concubine of King Alfonso VI of the Spanish royal house of Castile. And this Spanish house of Castile later on married into the house of Windsor. And here you see the result. And his name is Charles Al Windsor bin Harabia in his ancestral clothing, ready to defend the house of Al Windsor bin Harabia and its religion with the sword. So here you can read about it. I'll read it for you. It's little known by the British people that the blood of Mohammed flows in the veins of the Queen. Brooks Baker wrote to British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher at the time. 
Brooks Baker connected Queen Elizabeth to Mohammed via Zayda of Seville, a Muslim princess from the 11th century who converted to Christianity and became King Alfonso VI of Castile's concubine. However, it's not clear if Zayda was actually related to Mohammed or not. Abdulhamid al Ahuni, the historian who penned the article for Al Usbui, believes there was a connection to using Zayda as his linchpin. He traced Elizabeth's ge genealogy back 43 generations all the way to Mohammed. The purported connection builds a bridge between our two religions and kingdoms, he tells the economists. You know, it's the same story of uh, Donald Trump, you know, having, you know, from his Scottish mother side, being related to the royal house of Denmark and uh, and Norway. I made a video about it um, on my channel, Homeland Security, I think it was. So my logical question after all this is as follows. Are then those protruding ears from the prophet, whom they all seem to have in common as their ancestor, and that are now all over the news through the ears of this alleged terrorist here. Then could this also be the reason that, of course, Prince William also has the prophet as a common ancestor, that Prince William is backing up the Hamas and its leader with the same ears as his father and brother. So I repeat here what he said. I like, I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. So he's implying that the, uh, the jaywalkers shouldn't defend themselves. He see the swastika of his brother. And I repeat here, Prince William and Prince Harry have killed many innocent Muslims in Afghanistan. So if his father has the, is an ancestor of Mohammed, well, so does he. And remember, and so does he here, Mr. Harry. So, and remember, Amin al Husseini, who was uh, the head of two Muslim SS divisions, you know. And if he has also the ancestor Muhammad, and so did Amin al Husseini, well, you get the connection through this symbol here, the swastika, you know. I mean, why do they do this? Why is he saying this, you know? It all has a reason, you know, and the reason is that blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. That's what it's all about. It's the nobility. Wouldn't Prince William's latest opinions concerning the Gaza war be the third proof that they are in fact all related? We should also assume that Prince William had his ears secretly operated as a child. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that Prince William and future King of England is protecting Hamas and his alleged relative Yahya Sin and War by telling the JJ Bays and the Jaywalkers to stop defending themselves, which can be considered the fourth proof of Yahya Sin and War being a sleeper agent for the British Empire and genetically related to the house of Al Windsor Al Arabiya bin Arabiya. So this guy here of the Royal House of uh, Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, that's the name, Saudi Arabia comes from there. He is uh, allegedly also a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, just as this guy here, whose grandmother 
uh, the Queen uh, Elizabeth was a descendant of um, of the Prophet Muhammad and also his father, so him too. So both of them standing here are uh, allegedly descendants of the Prophet. So what's going on? I mean, how come all these royals are descendants of the Prophet? Then, logically, the Prophet himself must have been of Pharaoh's nobility as well, as all these are ones here are of the nobility. And they have this ancestor, the Prophet, in common, who is also, you know, logically of, of the nobility, you know. Uh, what do you think this is? You know, well, these are all pharaohs. So what is this? This is the sun, of course. I mean, what else could it be? You know, like the sun rays here. You know, it's um, so it says here Amun Ra sun worship by Pharaoh Al Saud. Look at this one here. Uh, you know, look at them. You know, well, they are not. We know where they are not English. You know, and they're definitely not even European. In Arabic, Al means house of, as in a royal house, which in Pharaonic is the Per, the Per A. It says, House of Sword is a translation of Al Sod, an, an Arabic dynastic name formed by adding the word Al, meaning family or house of, to the personal name of an ancestor. In the case of Al Saud, the ancestor is Saud ibn bin Mohammed bin Mukrin, the father of the dynasty's 18th century founder Mohammed bin Saud, the son of Saud. So bin, it means the son of. So this dude here with granny's tablecloth on his head, and with the same hereditary Yahya Sinwar ears and eyes, might be called Charles Al Winsar bin Arabia, which you can read here. Uh, here it says Charles Al Winsar bin Arabia. And I seriously believe the house of Al Winsar bin Arabia are not Europeans at all, as you can see here, which allegedly is one of the reasons of the massive import of Muslims in the UK, Europe and America. Hey Charles, can you tell us why your pals here of the Royal House of Al Saud are all covering up their ears? Here it says severe collusion, because if you compare these, what's being said here, and this image here, these two images in this collage, you know, we can see there's a very severe collusion going on. And considering his recent royal advice to the jaywalkers, it is very obvious that Prince William Al Winsar bin Arabia wants the jaywalkers to end, as in Outwick, during the whole catch without any means of defence. Which becomes even more obvious if you look at the Nazi ties of the Al Winsars with the Nazis, with King Edward here visiting Uncle Adolf and Princess Elizabeth practicing the Nazi salute with Prince Harry walking around with his favorite swastika shirt. And after all, you know, they're admiring and honoring, worshipping almost these two killer saints like Saint Michael and uh, Saint uh, George. So here it's, uh, here's, it says King Edward the Seventh. There he is. This is Princess Elizabeth. And here you can see Prince Harry. I mean, couldn't it be more obvious? So here it says Uncle Adolf. Here King Edward the Seventh. And look at it, how happy they are. 
smiling, he's smiling, even Uncle Adolf is smiling. And here says Prince Harry. He, oh, look at that. He's having the same symbol here as this bloke here. You know, so there are numerous alleged indications that the royal house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya wants the JJ base to disappear and the jaywalkers to perish. Most certainly so, because the Windsors have an alleged internal quarrel with Lord Baron de Rothschild, the Lords Levi and Strauss, and the rest of the British jaywalker nobility in England. So here it says Rothschild, Rothschild on the left hand side. And here you see Windsor. They all got their daggers out and their swords out here as well. And they're situated in England, which is being called Great Britain or United Kingdom nowadays. But I still call it England. So there's an internal war going on. It's so obvious. Mind you that due to the jaywalker nobility's diaspora and consequently not having had their own country for 2000 years the jaywalker nobility here on the right hand side have always been in favor of republican nwo horizontal rule Whereas the royal house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya and their pals in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the other Arab Emirates have always been for the OWO royal vertical rule of a feudal monarchy, which these guys here call a caliphate, for which they misuse religion in order to have the people fight for and build their aristocratic caliphate. Just as the Nazis had the Germans fight for the Aryans from the pharaonic Arion, meaning born out of the sun, whereas the Aryan master race are, of course, Pharaoh's nobility in Germany and Pharaoh's nobility in England, who come out of Germany anyway. And the same thing happening now again in the Middle East, where Islam has been turned into Islamo fascism by the Oriental nobility in conjunction with the royal house of Al Winsor bin Arabiya. Remember how the aristocratic Amin al Husseini, here to the left, collaborated with the Nazis, while Philistine was under a British mandate. You all remember my video here, Agent of the Garter, Adolf Hitler which we can see here in progress in this vicious Nazi circle by the royal house of al Winsar bin Arabiya. And this dark prince of the house of al Husseini visiting Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, while his Philistine homeland belonged to the British Empire. Is it that hard to see how the Windsors are involved in all of this? They are connected to all the players and all their consecutive nations. I told you so that all wars are internal wars of the nobility and especially two world wars in between the new Republican NWO horizontal rule and the old royalist feudal OWO ver um, vertical rule. And now World War III coming up for the very same reasons of horizontally very 
versus vertically. The Gaza war is an internal war of the nobility in between the Republicans and the Royalists of the Caliphate. So here you see the guys of the Caliphate and this they want to make a Caliphate out of it from the river to the sea, from the Euphrates River to the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. Look, here you can see the Jerusalem city wall with the sun hieroglyph in it of the 101 winged sun disk of Horus. So here it is. Watch my 101 movies. So here you got the O and these are is a one and here's a one if you if you put it up like this, you know. And these are the wings of Horus and this is the sun disk. You know, I made so many movies about this. Watch my video, The Pharaoh Show and the 101 series. This is in Jerusalem, in the JJ Bays. This is Pharaonic and probably built by the Ottoman nobility in the 16th century, just as we can see in Europe and in ancient Egypt everywhere. So here it is again. So the Nazis, they exactly had the same thing, you know, because it's all Pharaonic and Horus, the Nazis were the Nazi Templars. And the Knights Templars were of the nobility, and the nobility comes out of Pharaoh. And the Nazis had the wing here, and another wing. And here they had the, the, the Horus sun, winged sun disk with a swastika in the mill. You know, and now it's next to this flag here, which the Jaywalkers thinks it's theirs. Well, it isn't even theirs, because this is the seal of King Solomon. So this King Solomon seal is the same as this pharaonic thing here you know it's all by pharaoh and if the jaywalkers really were the supposedly you know god's chosen well obviously god would tell him all about this but it didn't happen you know it's me homie ross telling everyone about this and telling the jaywalkers about this so you know, you have to, dear jaywalkers, you know, you have to let it lose this thing about God's chosen people and all this, because it's just, it isn't true. Don't believe your Erevrav, you know, and fight for your lives, you know. There's no God is going to save you. You have to fight for your lives and you have to do it now. Here you can read about the walls of Jerusalem. Look at it, it's quite magnificent, really. Very old stuff, you know, a lot of history to be seen. Uh, here the Ottoman period, um, 6th century stuff. There it is, that wall. Magnificent, eh? that's very old. Eh? Here are some more. If I would go there, I would go for this, you know, for the history, you know. All these old buildings, you see here. Uh, this is probably older than the Ottoman Empire because the, uh, I'm not sure if the Ottomans, I mean, they were Turkish nobility. Look, it even has a fleur de lis, you know. Why, why does the Oriental nobility has, have the, the symbol of the uh, of the French kings. Eh? Well, they're all the same, you know. Uh, you want to play soccer in a uh, in a castle. And here another sun hieroglyph on the government building of Lebanon in Beirut, called the Grand Serai, from the pharaonic word Sar for king or pharaoh as in sar ai or sar a the big king and you know here it is here's the flag of lebanon i think they have a tree in it the uh, setter tree 
Here you can see the sun disk of Horus in the middle, and here the two wings. You know, this is also 101. And, um, you know, why am I showing you all this? You have to know that there's a lot of nobility in the Middle East, and they're still ruling everywhere. They always have been. And this is the reason for the Gaza war and everything what's going on. So here it is, Grand Serai of Beirut. Sar A, you know, the big pharaoh, the big king, Sar Ai. So here's that building. You see the sun hieroglyph and here's the flag of, uh, of Lebanon. There are some more buildings that are interesting here um, like this one here this i think this is the gate the uh the northern gate it said of the sar i you will see here the um the sun hieroglyph here the two wings and the sun in the middle and here it's there's a circle for the compass in a square so it says uh, square and compass, you know, Freemasonry, because this is the uh, the new system. You know, it's the government building, which is the Republic, and the Republic is being ruled by Freemasons. So this is why we have this here. And there's probably a lot more to see. This is the, the Seda tree again. Here's another sun hieroglyph here. How many? One, two, three four, five, six, seven of these things here, squares. No, they're squares and circles. There's one, two, uh, one, one, two, three, four squares and three circles making seven. So it's the concept of three and four. And it's exactly four for the square, what I've always been telling you. And it's um, it's three for the circles, you know, which is the concept of three for the uh, compass. And then you've got two pillars here for Yachin and Boaz. Well, it's everything is here. Eh? And this is in the Middle East, you know. So this is the internal war between the vertical rule and the horizontal war, uh, rule. So here I got a more enhanced, uh, detailed um, picture of the, the north gate of this building. I don't know where it is, maybe on the other side. And it looks like there are seven squares, by the way. So, but anyway, here there's a circle and there are eight things around, you know, octagon. You see, that's the octagon in the middle and it even has a uh, inner circle here. The inner circle is protected by the octagon from the square. You know, same thing. I've shown you this so many times. So I'm sorry, these are seven squares. But anyway, it's the same thing. It's probably these, these little black ones are probably circles. And, you know, so it says square and compass, you know, all over. So in Lebanon at the moment, there is the Hezbollah, you know, and they all say, you know, the, the Sunnis hate the Shia Muslims and the Shia Muslims hate the Sunni Muslims. They all hate the, the Christians and the, uh, and the Kurds and the uh, Yassidis, uh, if I pronounce that well. And of course, the Jaywalkers, you know. But none of them sees by whom they're actually being ruled by. You know, they're ruled in Pharaonic or in uh, Arabic. They're ruled by Fir'aun, you know, by Pharaoh. It's all over here. There's a sun hieroglyph and here it says square and compass. And instead of, you know, opening up their eyes, you know, they, uh, they blame their neighbors, you know, for everything, you know. Here you can see the parliament building in Damascus, Syria, with two times the square and circle for the square and compass. As Syria is a republic with only Freemasons in parliament, which is the rule of a NWO republic. On top of that, there is the sun hieroglyph, and above that a depiction of Bashir al-Assad, 
of the royal house of Assad in an octagon and the 101 sun hieroglyph winged sun disk of Horus. These are all pharaohs ruling the Middle East. So here we see the, uh, the flag of Syria and um, here there's the falcon. Just as this falcon here, it's not an eagle. It's, it's all because of this. And here's the sun hieroglyph. There's the sun here in the middle. It's nicely done because, you know, it had to be the opening of this, the entrance like so. But this is a circle, you know. And here you see the two wings. This is the sun hieroglyph or the 101. It's the same thing as this here from ancient Egypt. This is the sun disk with the two Uraeus snakes, and these are the wings of Horus. This is called the winged sun disk of Horus, and we see the same thing here. And here, just as in Lebanon, we see the circle here, the inner circle, and here is a square. So it says square and compass. And at the same time, there are eight things here. One, two, three, or eight, you know, with the little ones and the long ones here. So there's also the octagon, you know, in the same, you know, because the usually the octagon or the lower grades in the police and the military, you know, they're made out of the people, out of the square. So this is why it is like this. So it says here square and compass here and also here. It's all here, you know. And here you see depiction in Damascus or another town of Bashir al-Assad, the dictator of Syria, the pharaoh of Syria, you know, al-Assad, you know, I just told you so, al, it means the house of, it means a nobility, aristocratic house, and he's in an octagon. So the octagon is defending the inner circle, which is the bloke here with his, sun, with his sunglasses here. And on each side, there's the wings, you know, and that's why we got an opening here, because, you know, there are the wings, the wings of uh, Horus, just like this symbol here. They know it, you know, that's why they do it. And the Nazis they had exactly the same thing here within the circle, the swastika. And then you got the wings of Horus. And this is a falcon. This is a falcon. And this is a falcon. And also this is, you know, depicting a falcon, the sun hieroglyph. So Pharaoh's nobility, they're ruling all over the Middle East. So why don't you guys open up your eyes and stop fighting each other, like between the Philistines and the Jaywalkers, you know, the Arabs, the Muslims and the Jaywalkers and the, the Shia against the Sunni, the Sunni, you know, and against the Christians, against the white race, you know, it's everybody against everyone, you know. So in spite of the fact it's so obvious, you know, we got the enemy within, you know, and they're all, they're all ruling in parliaments and, you know, it's, they depict it everywhere on the walls and, and their own symbols like here, the Nazis and the pharaohs, you know, why don't you open up your eyes and listen to Homie Ross? Therefore, in Syria or Sham, there was the nobility's inner war between the horizontal rule republic of Syria and the vertical Sharia rule caliphate of the IS, which full name I ne neither can pronounce due to the censorship machines. Syria is a full pharaonic demotic name from Sar-ri-ah, from the demotic the king pharaohs were born out of the sun. And here we can see the sun here and here and here and here and also here. So Syria is from the demotic pharaonic Sar for a king, like the word Caesar or Nebuchadnezzar, not very far away. Or the Tsars in Russia, Sonaltes Royal, you know. And Ri, it means the sun, officially, and A, it means big or pregnant. So, you know, the sun, pregnant, kings. So the pharaoh kings were born out of the sun. 
And of course, the name Sharia, it means the same thing. The Sharia is a vertical rule by the caliphates, by the pharaohs, by the Sharia. And therefore, it is not a coincidence that there is a resemblance between Prince Philip to the left and Havez al Sad, the father of Bashir al Sad, al Assad, to the right, who both have quite identical ears. It says the Caliphate by Pharaoh's nobility. And here you see the caliph or the emir, and here you see the people who have to go into the to the dust, you know, to to kiss his toes or whatever, you know. What an honor, eh? And here they all have to bow for the caliph. So the poor people of the Middle East believe that the only solution to escape the Arabic dictators of Pharaoh's nobility is religion and its supposed caliphate. Not knowing that the caliphate is a system by Shaitan, Iblis and the Dajjal of the very same pharaonic nobility whom they wanted to escape in the first place. Only the first, whom you can see here, are horizontal pharaohs. And the second, whom you can see here, the vertical pharaohs. I, I explained the difference between the vertical rule and the horizontal rule in my previous videos, and it is very important to understand this. And because the Oriental people of the Middle East can't figure it out in this total chaos, they blame the jaywalkers for everything. Well, in the end, you have to blame someone, right? Look how the pals of King Charles al Vinsar bin Harabiya murdered the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in 2018 in Turkey, butchering the poor man and cut him up in tiny body parts to manage the physical proofs out of that Saudi embassy in Turkey. So it says on a van, probably in England, look at all the camera, it must be England, don't it? It says here, this is Jamal Khashoggi murdered on October the 2nd, 2018 with the, the guy with the tablecloth here, the same one as here, looking over his shoulder, shoulder and smiling. It says, justice for Jamal. So, oh, now I get it, the tablecloth here and here. They butchered him up and they needed the tablecloth, you know, because they cut him up into tiny parts. And well, if you digest that, you know, and have a meal, then you get rid of the evidence, you know. So that's probably why the uh, the tablecloth. Eh? This is the nobility and what we're dealing with. Our masters are medieval butchers who butchered Jamal Khashoggi only because he criticized the royal pals of Sultan Charles and Caliph William, as if the embassy of Al Saud was transformed into a medieval castle of the Caliphate with a torture dungeon in it, in the middle of the 21st century. So here you can see the Caliph William together with his spell of Saudi Arabia of uh, Al Saud worshipping Amun Ra, the sun. Here it says the city of Los Angeles, Jamal Khashoggi Square, a journalist and advocate for human rights and democracy slain by the Saudi government. Well, let me tell you, Saudi Arabia does not have a government. 
this is the government. It's a vertical rule by the by the by the monarchy, by the pharaohs. A government, you know, is a horizontal rule. These ones here of the house of Al Saud, you know, they give the final orders, you know, and a government is a horizontal rule, you know, of a um, a republican democracy. There are many people in a horizontal rule and in a government ruling together and talking and whereas this is an absolute monarchy it's a vertical rule so maybe you want to change this this is the nobility who have no problem at all to provoke a large middle east war by using their hamas or sham and their Yahya sin and war in order to reinstall their worldwide caliphate. And you can be sure that when the Muslims have finished off the JJ Bays and the Jaywalkers, that after that the Europeans will be next on the list. Look, he's already having his tablecloth ready ready to be dished up. I guess the one world end times government will be a caliphate one, giving us all the end times chip in our hand and forehead. We're practically seeing the birth of the end times caliphate of Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. I suppose that Sultan Charles Al-Winsar bin Rabia here said to his son, Look, William, can you do me a favor for my friends of the Oriental nobility like Al Saud and the Emirs of Qatar and tell those jaywalkers in the JJ base to stop defending themselves? because we're not moving on here with the caliphate's project. We're being played, people. They are leading us directly into the end times of a total control rule of Pharaoh's nobility. Just watch this very important video I made 12 years ago on my channel Gatsefrats about how the beginning of World War II is related to the biggest discovery of the 20th century, where one year prior to the war, the biggest oil reserve of all times was found in Saudi Arabia on March 3rd, 1938, making World War II possible barely one year later because it needed a lot of oil to have all the tanks roll, all the submarines and battle cruisers sail, all the jeeps and trucks driving, all the cannons move, all the bombers and fighter planes fly, and this is what they were waiting for so World War II could start. And on this moment, you see Al Saud doing the Hitler salute, the Nazi salute, and visiting Adolf Hitler in the eagle's nest. So, watch this movie. I made it, it's not, it was 12 years ago. In 2012, now we're 2024, and here's the title. Make sure you download it because I already took it away once. You know, this is so important. We are being played, and these are the pals of King Charles Al Windsor, you know, bin Arabia, doing the Hitler salute, you know, having the tablecloth on his head here. You know. And all of this happened 
were the caliphates of al Saud rules, with in reality the house of al Winsar bin Arabiya pulling all the strings. And that's why we had two Muslim SS divisions in Europe murdering 400,000 European civilians, with at the head the aristocrat Amin al Husseini from Philistine. And circle closed with today's Hamas, Yahya Sin, and war which is all related to Saudi Arabia, the house of al Winsar, and the discovery of the biggest oil pit in history in 1938, just before World War II, enabling the entire world war with Amin al Husseini and the two SS divisions, and now this here. Yeah. Look at this treat in Saudi Arabia showing the concept of three and four for square and compass. Here it is. So there are three squares for the squares, and the concept of three, there are three of them, and the concept of three is stands for the compass. It's the same all over the world with Pharaoh's nobility ruling the globe and having their internal wars, which we, the people, have to fight for them, like human pawns on a chessboard, with two noblemen playing us out. The nobility is very abundant in Gaza, and here is another proof of that. And there are even ancient castles like this Qasr al Basha. Sounds a bit like castle, doesn't it? Qasr. It's from the 13th century, with here the sun hieroglyph here of Horus, just as anywhere else in the world, and on numerous castles in Europe, as all nobility derives from Pharaoh. It's this local nobility of Gaza, the driving force behind Gaza, together with Al Saud, Qatar, and the house of Al Winsar bin Arabiya behind the screens. Believe me, Mr. Sin and War is from the nobility, as no one else can achieve this kind of organization. And Pharaoh's nobility use religious hocus pocus as a higher authority to set the people's conscience in peace, just as they did in Europe during the Middle Ages and afterwards through ecclesiastical terror and ecclesiastical fairy tales. Hamas is like the Spanish unholy. Inquisition. Exactly the same, because it's the same people behind it who always use the same techniques. So here you can see the, uh, the in Spanish Inquisition, you know, carrying the crosses, and they're all like hooded up, just like Hamas, you know, with their hoods, you know, and here praying. It's exactly the same thing. And it's the nobility with their castles, Pharaoh's nobility. They are behind it, you know, as the church, it, it has always belonged to the nobility. And the Protestant church was uh, founded by the Knights Templars. Uh, so here you can read about the Qasr al Basha, Qasr, like castle. Here you can see it behind the gate, you know, there's the staircase. Here was the, uh, the sun hieroglyph. Here it says 13th century. And well, read it yourself. Also, call it Radwand Castle, maybe. I don't know. So, the Qasr al Basha. So, in Gaza, there are castles, you know. And um, I just want to point out how important it is to know that 
the nobility in Gaza. They are very, very present. And this is what the Qasr al-Basha looks like today in 2024, bombed by the JJ Bay's army and the Jaywalkers. What a pity. Well, we still have the picture, thus proving once more again the overall presence of the nobility in Gaza and their descendants still ruling today over their utterly brainwashed population, while of course the nobility of Gaza, they are now hiding in Qatar, Dubai and Saudi Arabia, while the uh, commoners are just camping out on the beach. So here you can see at the corner the sun hieroglyph here. And this was the entrance and I think here was the uh, the steps going up here. So you can compare this. I'll show you the picture of how it was in 2023 uh, once more. And here it is again, the magnificent castle, um, Qasr al-Basha, so of the dynasty al-Basha, with here the sun hieroglyph, and here the entrance. You can see the metal bars in front of the windows. And I guess they had this part just renovated in colors, you know, which you can see in the, in the rubbles. So it is not anymore which is a pity because it's a very important proof that the pharaoh's nobility, you know, worldwide nobility, they're also in Gaza and in Philistine, and they're running the whole show. So here I did a comparison, so it's, you know, it's exactly the same work here and here, and then you've got this line here, and then here, and then the bigger stones, and then the smaller stones, like here, the bigger stones, the smaller stones. Only this looks different, but it's, you know, it's bombed out. And maybe it's from the other side, you know. So this is what it looked like in 2023, before the jaywalkers bombed it. And this is what it looks like today, 2024. It's gone. And I looked it up, Kasser, it, it means a palace or a castle. So it doesn't only sound like castle, but it, it, it is a castle. And Basha, it means a Pasha, you know. That's a high rank official, high ranking official. Uh, it's a Turkish word, Al Pasha. So it's the castle of the Pasha. It's, um, it's a nobility. The, uh, the nobility's castle, which you can see it is, by the way. And, but anyway, this, well, it's got also the metal bars and like here. But you can see it's the, um, it's the same castle. It's um, completely destroyed now. And also this building here in Gaza has been completely destroyed. It's the ancient fortress from the year 1387 by the name of Khan of Amir Yunis al Navruzi and has also been destroyed. But anyway, it shows how present the nobility has always been in Gaza until this very day. And they are the ones behind the Gaza war and behind Hamas. As usual, it's Pharaoh's nobility as usual. So it's very important to show, to, to know these images here, like here, these ancient castles, you know, that it's not just a bunch of people camping out on the beach, you know, who are not, who don't have any more food and, and the, uh, the Hamas and killings and everything, you know, but it's very important to know that there is a Gaza nobility and a nobility you know they're always the ones ruling and steering everything they are the warlords you know telling the people you go into the war you kill these and that and they're also the ones behind all religion 
just as in Europe. The pharaonic media won't tell you this. Huh? They only keep you on a primary emotional level of poor Philistines versus poor jaywalkers sp splitting the world into two camps. The whole shebang can only be solved through cold intellectual analysis instead of this um, emotional slave level. Yes, it sounds hard, but war is hard and our masters even harder with us, their slaves. There was so much oriental nobility in Philistine and the entire Middle East who were all having real slaves as an estimated 14 million Nubians were slaves and owned by the Arabic nobility throughout history. It is therefore that in Arabic, the word for a slave and a Nubian, whom you can see here, is the same word, and which is the word Abd, as for instance in the name Abdullah, meaning a slave of Allah. So for the Arabs, and most of all the Oriental nobility, of course, a Nubian is the personification of a slave. Then in 1948, the jaywalkers forbade slavery by the Arabic nobility, who therefore lost wealth, land, and power, because a nobleman will never work himself and needs his slaves to work for his dynasty. Then the hard-working jaywalkers grew in wealth through plain hard work, making a little paradise out of the JJ bays, while the Philistine nobility literally faded away in lazy backwards feudalism without slaves, who couldn't cross the threshold into the modern age of industrialism and science. And in their aristocratic despair came the only solution which they had practiced over thousands of years, namely terror, the caliphate, feudalism, lies, takia, and a massive birth index in order to steal everything for which the jaywalkers labored so hard and successfully for, transforming the backwarded Philistine into a JJ Bay's paradise. Well, this is what the nobility always did all over the world, stealing, robbing, torturing, lying, wars without end, and have the people work in a feudal system while they themselves lie on their backs the whole day while raping our daughters. Ladies and gentlemen, this and nothing else is what the Hamas and the Gaza war is all about. So here you can read about the history of slavery in the Muslim world. And here it says the Arab slave trade was most active in West Asia, North Africa and Southeast Africa, and rough estimates place the number of Nubians enslaved in the 12th centuries prior to the 20th century at between 4 to 10 million. Well, I even heard about 14 million, but it, I mean 10 million is already a lot, and even 4 million, so it must have been very, very much, you know, very many, many. Nubian slaves, and even the word for a slave and a Nubian is the same word, namely Abd, as in the word Abdullah. Maybe it's also in the text somewhere. I'll let you read it yourself. Qatar plays a dominant role in the financing of international terrorism 
where Putin and his oligarchs shipped all their wealth, which led to the downfall of the Swiss Credit Suisse Nazi bank in 2023, which you can see in this video here, which I made last year. You see Credit Suisse, they are yachts, bringing, transferring all the money to the Emirates, like Qatar is one of the Emirates. And you can see that here on my other channel, Homeland Security, and here's the title. And also the Swiss uh, grey eminence here, François Genoux, and personal friend of Hitler and Amin al husseini eventually had his Al-Taqwa terrorist bank based in Qatar and in Switzerland, together with the Swiss Hans Huber, who came twice to threaten me and my family while I was in Switzerland. So the name Huber, it became uh, Hoover in uh, American English, like uh, J. Edgar Hoover and uh, President Herbert Hoover. It's another Huber. So here you can see François Genoux. And uh, here's the title. He's a, he was a great eminence. And I made this video in 2014. So that's um, 10 years ago. On my channel, Gatsefrats. And I talked many more times about this. So here you can see the Emir of Qatar, probably this one, or maybe both of them. And this is in Qatar. And here you see the Sun Hieroglyph. It's also the, um, it's the 101. You know, if you put this up, it's a 101. That's where it comes from. And it's the winged sun disk of Horus. Here's the sun disk, and here are the wings of Horus. As we're being ruled by pharaohs all over the world, and especially here, you know, it's an emirate, an emirate. So Qatar is ruled by an emir of the Arab nobility and was a British protectorate from 1916 to 1971. 55 years to theoretically make some royal descendants by these ones here. To allegedly have these kind of characters born there to infiltrate the Middle East for the royal house of al Windsor bin Arabia, who, as we know, are not even English, but from the German house of Gotha Coburg, and aren't German either, but pure pharaonic as the entire nobility. So here it says, the house of Sax, Coburg and Gotha, and um, here you go. You can read it yourself, find it yourself. Here it's about the United Kingdom here. Uh, the British line of uh, Saxe-Gotha Coburg was founded by King Edward the uh, Seventh. He was the son of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg, there we are, and Gotha. His successor and son, King George the Fifth changed the name of this line of the royal house and family to Windsor. And that's not very long time ago because King George V, uh, he died in 1936. So this happened in the 20th century. So here you can see it. Here you can read about it, Qatar, and um, here it's about the uh, here the Ottoman period, and here's the British period. Yeah, from 1916 to 1971. 
So Qatar became a British protectorate, <laughs> protectorate on November the 3rd, 1916. And it got its uh, independence here. Well, independence, there's no thing as independence, you know, in 1971. It's all about bloodlines, you know. And here you see the stamp, it says Qatar, and here's uh, Queen Elizabeth. Well, you, you explain me about independence, eh? It's all about bloodlines, really. And the politics, yeah. yeah. Qatar is officially a semi constitutional monarchy, but the white powers retained by the monarchy have it bordering an absolute monarchy. Well, it, it, it is an absolute monarchy, you know, really. And um, it's all about this pharaonic bloodlines. That's what it's all about. You know. And they're presenting it completely differently, changing names into Windsor. And, you know, a chameleon couldn't do it any better as these ones here. How they're changing colors, changing names, changing appearances, disappear pop up somewhere else again and completely leave us in the dark of what they really are and what they are really trying to achieve under a chameleon's veil under which they present themselves to their surroundings and you are the surrounding here you can see qatar on the map here and how it's basically a part of uh, Saudi Arabia, it says in French, Arabie Saoudite. All of this is Saudi Arabia, almost going to the JJ base and the Mediterranean. And also the other emirates like uh, Dubai and uh, Kuwait, they're all basically a part of uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a um, an absolute monarchy. So is Qatar. So is Kuwait, and so is Dubai. Oh. The name Qatar is being pronounced as Qatar in Arabic, which suspiciously sounds like Qazar, as in Qazaria. Qatar from the pharaonic. Ka for Sol and Sar for King Pharaoh, all together meaning where the souls of kings live, for for Ka Sar or Kathar. Those searching for Kazaria, you better look here where all the money is and where it says so in the name Kathar and the Kathari Ah. Katharia. So here you can see from an airplane window the extremely rich Qatar. And here it says Qatar. It sounds very much like Qazar. The car is exactly the same as only the T, and this here is a, uh, a Z or an S, which comes out of the pharaonic demotic Ka and Sar. Ka is the ever is the soul when you're alive. The Ba is the everlasting soul for the pharaohs, and Sar it means the king. Pharaoh, like a Tsar or Caesar, the king of Rome, or Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And Ka Sar it means soul, king. Here it says Kazaria, and the people of Qatar, they are called the Qatari, you know. Kazaria Kataria. You know, there's very much in the name. So, Switzerland is still the base of Pharaoh. But I see this is slowly or maybe even rapidly taking over at the moment. And here, too, you see all these pyramids in the building here. This is why the Al Jazeera TV network 
makes only propaganda for Hamas when talking about the Gaza war, because Al Jazeera are the state media of the absolute monarchy of Qatar, who are in fact an emirate, which is identical to a caliphate, which Hamas wants to establish by murdering everyone else in the region. Qatar is the caliphate and they train, hide and finance Hamas for the obvious reasons and they've been training and hiding all other terrorist groups all the time before. So here it says Al Jazeera is Qatar's propaganda network for the coming global caliphate. So here you can see the Raffles Hotel in Dubai. You know, and here it says Dubai Emirate of Pharaoh's nobility. Well, how much more obvious can it be? Eh? With a capstone in gold on it. And here as well on the building, another capstone and a pyramid on top. Here's another pyramid, here another one, here an obelisk, here pharaonic stuff, here as well. You know, there are four pillars for the concept of four. The pillar is round for the concept of three. It says square and compass. Well, you know, this is Dubai. Now, how much more obvious can it be? I mean, this is not very far from ancient Egypt. It's like on the other side of the dip, you know. And also Dubai is an emirate of the oriental pharaonic nobility, just like Qatar, and which is an absolute monarchy feudal system, also called a caliphate or emirate, who of course want to export the caliphate idea to the entire world and also to places like Gaza and the Philistine JJ base which of course the royal house of al winsar bin arabia also want as they're not happy at all in the british constitutional monarchy of the horizontal rule yes world war three will be about the royalists trying to defeat the republicans and make a big caliphate out of europe America, Australia, and the rest of the world. So here we can read about Dubai. You can look it up yourself. And look at all the castles here. I mean, that's a sign that the nobility, I mean, they are there. Here, another one. And some more. So Pharaoh's nobility is here. And what is important to know, that's this here, the government. Uh, here you see, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Here it says, Dubai has been ruled by the Al Maktoum family since 1833, and the Emirate is an absolute monarchy. And an absolute monarchy is a form of monarchy in which the monarch rules in their own right or power. In an absolute monarchy, the king or queen is by no means limited and has absolute power over the slaves. Often such monarchies are hereditary. They're dictatorships. You know. And um, so they are the vertical rule and they want the vertical rule to expand into the caliphate. You know. That's why we have the Gaza war. And here you can see the pharaonic Wafi shopping mall of Dubai with obelisks, pyramids, statues of their direct pharaonic ancestors and the winged sun disk of Horus. Do your shopping at Pharaoh Ramses II and get a pint of some heavenly Isis milk and some spicy busted meatballs so here it says the name is the wafi mall supermarket in dubai 
Pharaoh Emirate. And an emirate is the same as a caliphate, you know. With obelisk, the symbol of the pharaonic domination. And a pyramid on top of it. And here the winged sun disk of Horus with the sun in the middle and here the two wings which is the 101 sun hieroglyph which we find everywhere and here still in Dubai the Sofitel Pharaonic Hotel with the winged sun disk of Horus three lamps for the Osiris Isis Horus family from big to small and the royal pillars of Yachin and Boaz. Do you have any doubt the pharaohs are living in the emirates where all the world's money went to since they've been draining Swaziland since the financial shift of 2008 world finance crisis? So here it says the emirate is the same as a caliphate and this is the Sofital Hotel in Dubai. Here you got the Falcon and this is the hotel desk, you know, imagine. Here you got the three lamps here from big to small and the, and the one in the middle. The winged sun disk of Horus, the two pillars, Yachin and Boaz. So that means all pharaohs of the entire world, they're, they're welcome here. And when World War Three starts is happening, they will probably all be coming here, our masters. And of course in Switzerland as well. This here is part of the origin of the Gaza war and Middle East crisis, which is an internal war of Pharaoh's nobility in between their vertical royalists and their horizontal republicans. And here you can see again the um, the hotel uh, desk with the um, the falcon, the Sofitel hotel. And here you can see a lot of Anubis, the uh, the jackal god here. One, there are four of them, or maybe even what well, looks six at least. So. It's like a, a rebirth of uh, ancient Egypt here. I mean, can you deny it? No. You know, it's the reincarnation of ancient Egypt, and it's already there. The JJ Bays and America are horizontal republics, and Britain plays a dirty role pretending to be America's friend, but in reality, teaming up with the caliphate guys, thus pumping millions of Muslims into Europe in order to reinstall British absolute monarchy back into its full glory. And where are the Europeans in all of this? Well, slowly but certainly disappearing. Bye bye. Farewell, you dumb coward slaves. We're witnessing the rebirth of Pharaoh and the reincarnation of ancient Egypt. Fight now, people, or perish painfully. Of course, all these powers behind Hamas, like Saudi Arabia and absolute monarchy, Qatar, also an absolute monarchy, Dubai, also an absolute monarchy, represent the caliphate because an oriental absolute monarchy is a caliphate a pharaonic model they just want to have expanded throughout the middle east and europe therefore creating hamas al-qaeda is hezbollah and the rest of these caliphatists by the way they call the European Caliphate Al-Andalus. We may use Pharaoh's media to see what happened, but they will never tell you why it happened or who did it make happen. At this point, I step in and tell you the whole story because this is 
what my house told me since I was a small kid. Now, I'll lead you the way.